<laughs> Hi everybody! It is Tuesday night. It is group stream night. We are Easy Allies. There's a lot. There's a lot going on this evening. This is a complex evening. First of all, it's Hall of Greats. We'll get to that in a second. Some of you are like, "Yes, it's Hall of Greats." Other of you are like, "What of Greats?" And so you need a little context there. We will provide it. But <laughs> this is all. There's a mad search right now for the remote control that operates the television. Damiani's on sync as well. He's on it. It is the, the last night to lose anything in this garage. Now is the time. Ready? If you haven't found something, now is the time to find it, or it will be found tomorrow. It's the last time we'll ever have sync issues with our audio. When we pack up. Uh, oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. promised me. He said one more, and then that's it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, Damian. Well, as long as Kyle's word is not binding. Because tomorrow, we are going to be packing up almost everything in this room and taking it over to our studio space. And then we are going to continue building things. Many things have been built. We are going to continue. We're going to set up the two new couches that we got today. Woo! Uh, we're going to be setting up, obviously, all of this equipment uh, in the various rooms. And then, should everything go swimmingly, next Tuesday night, we will be streaming live from uh, a space you have not seen before, introducing you to our new studio space, lovingly provided to us by a lot of people. Obviously, we get support here on YouTube, uh, on YouTube and here on Twitch, but uh, primarily patreon.com slash easy allies. All the wonderful patrons made that studio happen. 2018 we are moving in in 2019 and this is it this is the final garage stream hopefully we don't skip a beat and we don't miss a tuesday and we can come back you know like like nothing ever happened in a brand new space also but, thank uh, you for 200,000 subs on youtube yeah. And we have yeah. yeah and thank you for all our subs tonight dr risenbig those are going by real fast Farmer's on. the static res channel thank you everybody it's just slowly rolling away. but it is also what we're doing a clap test. just like oh, good Oh. 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 Pepe El Toro's oh. gift and subs. Ten Thank you. Goodness. Thank you. When we all look over, that's when the, the surprise subs start happening. But tonight is also good. Hall of Greats. And Hall of Greats is our, uh, we just three or four times a year where we induct uh, two games into the Easy Allies Hall of Greats. Each one of us is going to talk about a video game tonight. We're going to have five minutes to pitch said video game to the other allies and five minutes to defend it. And at the end of the evening, we will all be voting for what is going to go into Hall of Greats. Any more specific details, Kyle Bossman? <laughs> yeah, we have a new rule uh, for this uh, season. Uh, no alliances. Woo! <laughs> Very <laughs> sad. No alliances are out. Uh, that's it. Basically, we'll each spend five minutes making a case for the game that we want in the Hall of Greats. Uh, each of us has picked a game personally that we want to champion. Uh, then there will be five minutes of cross examination where we, as a group, play devil's advocate. We have to do our due diligence of making sure this game truly earns its way into the Hall of Greats. It gets salty. It's all in good fun. Uh, we have to we have to say mean things about very good games. Uh, it's just part of the gig. Then we vote. Each of us gets uh, six Werehogs. Uh, we must uh, split those into three, two, and one, uh, giving three Werehogs to the game we want most in the Hall of Greats, two to our second, and of course one to our third. Damiani will count all of those Werehogs, and we will induct, as John said, two games at the end of the night. Also, I just confirmed with Damiani that the nominees on the side of the screen will not be in alphabetical order. Woo! So you yeah, won't nice. be able to yes, guess. That was really right. last time. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to guess what they are. There was a are. big gap for T last time. I was like, yeah. oh, they're going to guess it. They're going to guess it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, I have a question. Are we allowed to vote for our games or not? No. 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 <laughs> we changed Good that one time. Time. You can't. Here's the thing. I want, I want that rule changed. Why? I've been, I was pushing you can't, for that you want to vote since, for your own? I was pushing for that rule from the very beginning, so I'm happy it's now. Well, the, the reason I don't mind that is because everything, the wonderful thing about this is when we vote, we're all coming in individually and we yeah. get to talk. And actually, like, one of these days I want to binge watch all the deliberations. I've never seen that. Like, I think I watched one. I was curious like, oh, how many people voted for something. Yeah. The testimonials at the end, yeah. Uh, and so it's really between us and our wonderful community how we want to portray ourselves. Like, if you want to be known just exclusively to this crowd, as as someone who constantly votes for their own material, that's yeah, on you, you know. But uh, so but it's saying, a rule. So you're saying it's allowed, but it's it's no, it's on? not. Currently, it is not allowed. Okay. I'm just expressing my own personal opinions. But I'm just one of I'm it one got, of nine. It made things confusing because the um, 
if something receives no votes, it's banned for a year rule just got complicated because it's like not counting your own votes and just made everything weird and that is a rule that is a rule still in place if your game receives zero votes it is banned for a year you can't bring it back yeah um I, I just feel like let's say hypothetically i want uh gta 5 in the hall of greats traitor i should not bring it because mm. i can give it three votes if somebody else brings it right yes but no one but else you will can't argue def- it you as can't well as you. It. Yeah. And it's not a bad look. It's not a good look if, like, in deliberation, you know, in, in the debate period, you're like, so why is it so great? You know? But it totally changes. Online has made a lot of money. You know? It changes the whole dynamic. It, Carl, right. It's about the group, you know? So you bring something that you think everyone thinks is And that's great. what, yeah, okay. it has to yeah. stand on its merits. We can make it a line item opinions, in the meeting later this week. Own. Okay, all right. Well, now it's not the time. Put a pin in that Put one. a pin in that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Hall of Greats is evolving. This is this format has changed a lot since we first started doing this, and so uh, uh, thank you for all of your feedback. Thanks for those subs and your good tips. Thank Ooh, you, Rory, for the uh, Hall for the of Greats subs. Is gas. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Are we ready? I yes, think we're good to go, dude. All right. First presenter. I'm terrified now. Oh yeah, I do want to cut it. I'm suddenly terrified. Nice. I got the cold sweat. The very first presenter tonight <laughs> for Hall of Greats will be Michael Huber. Oh, You're always first. I felt my name coming too, that's really weird. Most kills, most deaths. Uh, <laughs> most he, to be fair, like, I felt my own name coming too. No, okay. uh, me too. Uh, uh, Alright. What? That needs to... We'll move it, we'll move it back. Alright, right, 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 right. uh, Ian, do you want to be timer still? Sure, I love timing. It gives me something to do. <laughs> are, are we cool with the, uh, the one minute? <laughs> I love time. The one minute morning? Yeah. I actually hate uh, time, but... Uh, you can ask how yeah. much time's left. I got a video. How ironic. You just leave me a key when you want that to play it. You are the timekeeper. Started at, like, <laughs> the one time. minute mark or something. <laughs> okay. Just give me... Like, after a minute, just... Only the video is going to be showing instead of you guys. What's up? When you play the video, it's only going to be the video. Cool, cool. yeah. Cool. Let the well, game what? speak for itself. Right. And you guys can see up here. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Will they be able to hear us? Yes. Will they be able to hear Same us? Else. Yes, I'm not muting you. Okay. Yeah. I'll cool. keep the video audio. What is uh, nothing. For for mine you can have us like in the bottom corner or something. Yeah. Okay. Or Are whatever. I'm set? waiting for you, Hubert. I'm waiting for you to start talking. Okay. My game today is a game I have previously brought before. Mm-hmm. Oh. And without a Shadow of a Doubt is one of the greatest video games ever made. The Last of Us. Mm. The Last of Us is so good. Make it <laughs> right, allies. Make it right. This is a game where everything you do matters. Every item you pick up matters. Every bullet you fire, every health item used matters. This is a game that asks you to be part of a brutal, brutal world and empathize with the lead character because he goes through a tragic, tragic beginning. One of the best intros of all time in video games, hands down. Uh, But... I'm not even going to talk about multiplayer, because I don't think anyone here has even played The Last of Us multiplayer, but it is amazing, legendary, so just take that into account when you are casting your votes that a huge component of this game is amazing. Um, but The Last of Us, it's it's the story, It's there's so much, it's a world that is infinitely explorable. Yeah, it's not the biggest game world ever, but it is so lived in it is so real and tangible and the the core of this game are the human relationships the relationship between joel and ellie which is one of the most fully realized relationships in video game storytelling in my opinion like bar none one of my favorite absolute favorite relationships um the side characters like tess uh and Bill just have these these emotional arcs, these these beginning, middle, and ends of these arcs. 
Uh, I always go back to Bill's and, and finding the, the letter in the house. All the letters just tell of a story and build a world that you don't even need to see. Like a lot of The Last of Us you see, but a lot of it just uh, just enhances your imagination. You know, thinking about life before, life during the outbreak, the, the journey, right? Like video games... I, I love journeys in video games. The the literal journey from from traversing from one place to another, and also the journey of growth. The journey of Joel and Ellie starting out where they are, so uneasy, so guarded, and then so dependent on each other. It's just a marvel where these characters start and end. And by the time that ending rolls around, it is a gut punch and a tour de force in storytelling that you actually get to be a part of too you get to you know the end when i don't i don't want to spoil too much but the end with ellie and then your joel and you have to fight your way to her uh i love when you can feel the story in the gameplay and last of us is one of the greatest games of all time to do that it's not just Play the game, cutscene, you know, play the game, get rewarded with a cutscene. When you are playing, it is just enhancing all of that. And I love it. And it's some of my, again, some of my favorite environments to explore. I think of the school. I think of the mall. I think of the, the DLC Left Behind, which is amazing. Her and Riley, uh, you know, that I, I factor that into the, the whole package. Um, oh, this game. <laughs> just the yeah, just the atmosphere, um, and and it's not just the story and exploration. The combat too. The combat is so freaking good. The stealth, the action, sneaking up on a clicker, like the one shot kill from a clicker is one of the most stressful, terrifying things uh, ever in a survival horror game. Can't even handle it. If those things get you, you're dead. I love how high stakes that is. I love the variety of the scenarios. There's so many different combat scenarios. Humans and clickers, just humans, just clickers. Uh, the bloaters, the like semi-boss fights. There's just so many, so many, uh, di the, the, so many different types of combat encounters that it stays fresh the entire time. Just expert pacing time. Man, do we need to troubleshoot something? Uh, we can't with our starting expert. Ah, oh. I can't add video, uh, videos on Whoops. my expert at the moment. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Well, should we restart real quick? Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. I want to play Heber's video. Well, we have day. to. You have should, video, should we right? do the we rebuttal videos. and then... Did you test yeah. the other ones? Sorry. Yep, well, let me add any... Yes. All right, we we'll should, do we'll the rebuttal. Let's rebut rebut first. We should, yeah. re we should redo exploit. Right? We well, some people is, have to show videos. His is a video. Okay, so, that, like, so that's the only way there, for videos to work? There is a way to still show videos. Um, they'll just be possibly like a flicker or something in transitions and stuff. You yeah, just capture it, desktop? Play through a video player. Let's, I guess we can do that if there's yeah. sound. Yeah, I can still do sound. Okay, yeah, let's, just, let's just do that then. Yeah. Uh, okay. Jones, you're blocking chat sort of. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> Oh, I blood handle the edit with the blood face is so funny. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, food. Oh, All right. Right. All right. Dude. My dude. indecision to call you. And hear your voice of treason. <laughs> I cannot sleep. Um, I cannot dream. Should oh, we ready? just go? Should we dig in? Well, yeah, we dig in. Let's go. I'm ready. For, we should wait for John. Now he'll be positive. We should wait for. Never mind. Let's just go. <laughs> okay. Mine is Let me have it. Clean. Let me have it. I'll start with whenever someone starts talking. I'm ready. Yeah, I thought it was going to be you. Yeah, me oh. too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, I didn't hear I you talk, talk much this about. Game. Gameplay mechanics. God, I love the mechanics of this game. So please do. <laughs> okay. I, I, I didn't realize how much I missed the search of items, the upgrades. I loved upgrading your abilities and upgrading your weapons. I missed that so much in Uncharted 4. And that 
I, I am mad at myself for missing that in Uncharted 4. It's like, dude, that's not what it's about. Like, oh, like, make the numbers go up. But I love, in The Last of Us, how important items are because you're, you're strapped for ammo uh, and just, like, it's so replayable, you know? And, and I think, I, I, I love that, like, you can upgrade different weapons, you get the scrap, and, like, combat encounters are still challenging, even if you're fully upgraded, but then going back on New Game Plus, like, maxed out is still really fun, too. So I think it has a really good balance of, like, digging into crafting and, and leveling things up and also raising the difficulty and playing it on hard. hard Aren't I just kind of like hiding around until I get a headshot lined up? So it's, it's great because there's really good stealth, like underappreciated stealth in The Last of Us, dude. Like people don't call it a stealth game, but I think it has some of the best stealth in video games. Using the bottles and stuff, that's an old video game trick. Sure, it's nothing new, but like using the bottles to throw or the bricks, but then also being able to use a brick to throw at someone or as a melee weapon bashing their head in is really satisfying. But like <laughs> something about getting to an environment, hearing all the enemies around you, whether it's a clicker freaking out over here or like people talking about what's going on. Like I think of Ellie in the snow and they're like, she got away, find her, you know, and everyone's like looking for her, using all of the little nooks and crannies of the buildings to hide in, little back corners. You feel like it's an actual living place where you are and just picking off guys one by one is insanely satisfying. But Hubie, Hubie, we got to talk about that old buzz phrase, the ludonarrative dissonance, man. Yeah. Like, f games that came after this one that do a lot of the things that this game does, but I, I would argue better, like God of War, where it's like you've got, oh, here's this yellow line that's because it's interactive. Like, they yeah. actually explain that in the game world. Yeah. This doesn't. It makes no attempt to do that. Like, you go into the City Hall and there's just a bunch of waist-high walls. It's like, okay, I'm about to get in a shootout. Like you're hiding from clickers, but they can only hear you and not your companions. Like I, that stuff for me just really breaks yeah. the world. I think that is on the player. You know, if you want to obsess over little like game world things, like a uh, yellow line, like I understand that the yellow line is there to kind of guide me on my way, which I am 100% okay with. Uh, like, I really, I, I know it bothers you to hell, Ian, but right. I think it's, uh, I think that's a that's a case to case, and that shouldn't be a reflection <laughs> on the game itself. I think just everyone has different tastes, and that is not, again, that is not a reflection on the quality of The Last of Us. Let's just hope that in the next gen they address it. <laughs> yeah. Huber, yeah. Uh, a lot of what you described, particularly with the storytelling, I think it's pretty phenomenal in The Last yeah. of Us, and the encounters are great. Uh, I definitely had a moment uh, as I was playing through that game where I got really sick of just pushing things. I didn't feel <laughs> like it was... Exceptional gameplay. I didn't really feel like I was always getting great character moments out of it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it felt like there was just a little bit of fat that wasn't serving too much purpose. And by the end, like I was just kind of sick of pushing stuff around. Hmm. I mean, there are. I'm I'm having a hard time thinking about like the specific moments when you push. Like I think of the the plank early on. Uh, like crossing that over the gymnasium. The gymnasium. You push a lot of blocks in water. Yeah, mm -hmm. you push like yeah. Uh, but but then I think of like parts where what are like God of War kind of ripped it off, where <laughs> Ellie gets her kill and she's like really despondent, and you need her to like go do something, and she, she's just like sitting there. You're like, yo, Ellie, like God of War. That moment is phenomenal, but like Last of Us already did it. So I I, I really appreciate those moments, Ben, where you're just pushing. I think it breaks up the gameplay, breaks up the pacing. Uh, and I really, like, that's what I love. Time. I love, oh, quiet moments. <laughs> Again, Chad, we have to talk bad about these games. Play yeah. off. <laughs> All right, Beaver, you get to pick. Ian didn't enjoy that. Huh? You didn't enjoy that. Did enjoy you enjoy what? that? You had to do it. 
Yeah, no, I don't want to talk smack on Last of Us. That gets I gotta get something out of my car really fast. What? what? Is, it, is it food? <laughs> Drop drunk. A song? Drop drunk. Hair top style. <laughs> well done, Ebert. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Kyle just runs out of the building. It's a <laughs> I'm getting food. He's afraid. He's afraid. It's a afraid. He, he, wait a second. He's starting up his car. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta run to the end store. Man, if Kyle had puppets, that'd be so hype. If he has oh, Mega Man Legends puppets, I would lose it. <laughs> What? Next. Yeah. He's gotta have some new gimmick every time. I was gonna say, Listen, we're in. just busting in. So. Yeah, we're bust busting in. in. Sophie, come here. Sophie, come here. Come on. Yeah. Kyle ran to his car, so he can do whatever he wants until he's back. Ha 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 ha. Kyle's <laughs> errand is mine. What game would you bring to Hall of Greats, Amanda? King's Quest. I was just gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, two cool. specifically. Yeah. Why two? the first one I played. <laughs> let me start the timer. Uh, uh, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Okay, let me think about it. Okay, King's Quest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, actually, I might go with King's Quest 3 because you could port from places on the map to other places on the map, mm, and that was yeah, mind-blowing. Yep. So that really, uh, I thought that broke new ground. The Especially other game, King's Quest. <laughs> right? You walk so slow sometimes in King's Quest. Right. Well, I, 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 it moved at the right pace at the right time for me. Um... <laughs> And uh, the other game I think just that pops in my mind is Phantasmagoria because mm. uh, it was the first game that I played that incorporated uh, videos of people. So you could actually see people acting. Super cool. Which was different. It was so new. And then you could make them move around. What? Acting? And like now, of course, well, you know, <laughs> like we, we actually kind of got away from it, but like it was actual I love it. actors. Have you ever yeah, played the seventh game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eleventh hour. Dude, we need to like stream together. Oh, it's a spoiler, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Kyle, you're back. Did I respect your wishes? You did. Thank you. Where did Sophie go? Amanda, were you making a nomination just now? Well, because you were in your car, and so they <laughs> replaced you. Yeah. What, did you what did you nominate? Um, King's Quest Three. Yeah. Well, first I was a two, and then I said three, and then right. I said Phantasmagoria. Is that how that works? I get to nominate three? Yeah, and then, that's exactly and then, how it works. And then I win? Yeah. Stream of consciousness debating. Yeah. Sophie, come here. If your argument starts to get weak, just throw another game in there. Um, Real quick. Oh, sorry, baby. Sorry, baby. Come here. She's being so pathetic. She's like, no, I must give you my tummy. It's my tummy only. Sophie, come here. Get on the couch. Okay. Real quick, because I'm going to let everybody get back to Hall of Greats. Sophie and I just wanted to say that you might miss the set. But you're gonna like the new one, and the, all these people and this dog will still be stopping by. Please, Sophie. Yes. 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 All right. Uh, should I leave her or should I take her? Uh, she's you, she's losing her. She's she the happiest she's ever been. Oh, and she had a. Bath. It's her last. It's her last garage. It is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, need we got the barbecue out there, which is yeah. always rough. But I'll keep an eye on. Get her okay. into the chicken. Yeah. I'll get, let me, let me have <laughs> like the last week. Chicken. She had a bath today too, so she's very clean for this occasion. So right. enjoy my clean dog. All right. Bye, everybody. See you later. Bye. 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 I'm gonna close so the door just because it's cold. Yes. Oh, it's cold. Uh, you full screen? Uh, we lost. You, so you want me to be full screen on your presentation when you begin, like, or do you want to introduce? It? I don't think we lost. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. yeah. It, the introduction is is it. the presentation. Okay, so I'm going to present sleep. it's right now, so you see it. You mm -hmm. can see a black screen. You shouldn't see anything else. All black. And you want me to switch over right now to it? Uh, yeah. Do you want to do picture in picture? I think that would help this. I can do picture in picture. We give you one sec. Okay. Hi, BB. Do you want some chicken? Uh, I had to. I needed my sweater. You can't do hall of greats without your sweater. Um, that's, that's true. That's but true. it's a red sweater. Uh, that's in the rules. One second. I just need you to say this is okay. With me. Uh, oh, turn on the TV. Oh, okay. Get over there. Okay. 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 <laughs> is that too small? You want it bigger? It's like I don't want to think about this after he's presenting, presenting, but I can't. I can't get it out of my brain. You know. Right. Just the the the, the energy it just feels it's. Just lost it. All right. What? So you're right. You gotta bring that energy back, Kyle. Oh, I'll bring it, Jones. You okay, wanna get good. over here, dude? I gotta write down the name of it. Okay. Yeah. You're blind. You can do that on cam. Do arts and crafts. You can do that on cam. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm turning the TV on, Damiani. We good? Yep, it's a black screen. Okay. Chat sees the black screen in the bottom right. You're all good. Great. Great, 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 great. Great. Ready when you are. Is it not clicking, Kyle? No, no, no. Wait, give me a, one sec. Because I clicked, uh, it's not active window, so I might have to alt tab to it. Just let me know. Yep, it's, let me alt tab to it. There you go. 
Okay. And uh, I'm going to alt-tab back to it after I bring up your logo. Great. So give me a sec. When I'm Legend. <laughs> Here we go again. Now, a lot of video games <laughs> like to stuff the word legend into their titles. You know? But very few video games are actually legends. And so, the game I'm bringing today, forgive me, I've already presented it before, but I think it deserves another chance. I'm, of course, talking about The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't that game quaint? <laughs> to which I would say, yes. It is quaint. <laughs> My presentation to you tonight is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Greatness and Quaintness. Now, I would like to invite everybody just to stare at this image with me for a second. Look at this island. Jones, I need you to look at that. I'm looking at it. It's good. That is the entire game. <laughs> and so we're talking about simplicity. It's the first thing I want to talk about is simplicity. It is a Game Boy game, right? So we don't have a whole world. We don't have a, a kingdom to conquer. We have just an island, um, coherent island. Uh, I want to show you what it looks like in game. Look at this. Yeah. I love running my I just, running my eyes over this. There is no wasted square on this map. There is an interesting thing to do in every corner of this island. And again, I mean, it's simplicity, right? It isn't a huge map. A, a lot of that is because this is a Game Boy game, but it's using the the Game Boy to its fullest potential. It's doing everything it can with the limitations. And then the last thing I want to show you is how this map is represented in game. Very simply, this is, we get that, we understand this island just through these squares. And that kind of leads into my next point, which is about cohesion. Now, any Game Boy game can be simple, right? They kind of have to. But what makes this game unique is its cohesion, the way that everything works together. It's visuals, it's design, it's music, it's player action, it's writing and scenario. They all feel part of a whole, right? They're all a Game Boy game. Yeah, I get it, Queen. <laughs> but, <laughs> like player actions, think about that. You have two buttons, you have B and A. Those two buttons let you do so many things. You can shovel, you can fish, you can push, you can lift, just with B and A. Um, you can do anything. You, you, and writing in scenario, I mean, scenario kind of t leads into like, hey, we had to be on an island. You, we had to do all these things. But like, the writing also has to be simplified too. You only have so many characters in the space of a tiny little screen. And so in that simplification, we get down to just what we need. We get down to that quaintness, yes, but that focus. This is a game with focus. Every part of this game feels like it belongs to this greater whole. Uh, I want to talk lastly about quaintness as a weapon. <laughs> so here are the steps. Here's the steps of what this game does to you. Number one, become familiar with the characters in the world. We're used to this in any video game. I'm, a, I'm waking up in an island. I got to meet people. I got to go do things. I got to see where it's where. Uh, that's pretty regular, right? Step two, learn to care about the characters in the world. And then this is where we, like, we start doing quests for people. We start doing this trade quest. We start making people happy. We have cutscenes where we just talk to this girl about what life is like outside of the islands. You know, we make connections with this world. Uh, lots of NPCs, interesting people. And then finally, welcome to my trick. The game makes you choose to destroy the characters in the world. That's because this big guy, the windfish, is imagining <laughs> the entire game that you're playing. And then so, your entire goal in this game isn't to save anybody, isn't to conquer some evil, is not to save the world, it's just to make that big whale wake up. It's just that you have to destroy everyone. Everyone you made these connections with, this entire quaint world must disappear so that for some reason you can just leave the island. So I want to focus on these last three things. Simplicity, taking advantage of limitations. It's a Game Boy game, but it is the best Game Boy game. Cohesion, every element works together. Every element of this Zelda game works with every other part of it through visual style, through music, through through plot and weirdness and, and island and everything is all good. And that all leads to weaponized quaintness. Uh, 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 unique and unexpected impact. This game makes you feel something that other games cannot make you feel. Uh, it is t still, on its own, a unique game to me. It's made me feel, it had an impact on me. 
that uh, came from nowhere, right? It comes out of quaintness. And if it wasn't quaint, it wouldn't have that impact at the end. If it was just like a dark and brooding world, you wouldn't care if it disappeared because of some whale. But because it was this weird Zelda game where we worked so hard to collect all these items, where we met all these people and loved all these people, uh, that brings the impact. And that is what makes this game a legend. Much like the most legendary cheeseburger of all time, the Big Mac. Three stacks of excellence. <laughs> time. No, you didn't give me a minute. I did. You said one minute? Yes. I was stolen because I didn't hear you. I'm you sorry. Got, got uh, we up. said no I minutes. Will, we I will said say no it louder. Okay. okay. I guess. We saw oh, that Big Mac. sucks. That sucks. <laughs> Wonderful okay. presentation. Okay. 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 Yeah. Wonderful yeah. Great, 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 great yeah. presentation. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, I do oh, need to. I do need to do one because this guy on his site was like, "Hey, give me credit if you use this." Okay. So hold on. The burger. Yeah, the it's burger. Big Mac uh, it's not showing. So let's go to it real quick. We can skip it. Uh, you clicked right. out. There we go. Don't look at that. Uh, Bruce Juice, thank you for making those sprites. Bruce, 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 Bruce Juice. Bruce Juice. Cool. All right, then that we're good. That we're good. good. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Close this. Yeah, you can, like, you can, for any video game, there's usually sprite sheets. You can go and, like, find great resources. A lot of people put a lot of work into transferring sprites from games. Nice. And there's neat things that you can do stuff with. Like your Bruce Juice. I will, I will say the one-minute warning louder next time. I just didn't want to derail you. Great I was definitely stalling, too. Oh, sorry. That's all right. It's all right. Okay. Great presentation, though. Thanks. That was very good. Okay. All right. I'll start the timer when someone starts talking. Okay. Kyle, yeah. a big important aspect to me of the Legend of Zelda series is its dungeons or temples. What about this game's dungeons and temples stick out to you? What makes them so great? Uh, Brad, I was looking at the wiki. Mm -hmm. I love this. There are more talking bosses in this game than any other Zelda game. These bosses speak to you. These bosses are creatures who have motivations and, you know, personalities. I like that part of it. Again, they're focused, right? There's no like long water level, right? There's no level that overstays its welcome. There's some where you like you creep outside and, and I mean, you know, a link to the past did the same thing, but it's still pretty cool. Any dungeon in any Zelda game where you're in it and then you come outside, you're outside the dungeon for a little while and you're like, oh I have a hook shot now, and then you go over there and then you walk back in and like, oh I'm back in the dungeon. Um there's a really cool dungeon that's layers that you knock down. I think that one mm -hmm. remains unique. Um, and yeah, the boss fights are cool. They, they have interesting twists on perspective and things like that. You know, you'll go in 2D with a bunch of them. How did... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. How, how did they... Because the, 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 the... It was all a dream ending is always pretty lame. How did yeah. they pull it off here where it's not? They hint from the beginning it's a dream. You get tiny hints like in the library, something's weird. But by the end, you're not surprised that it's a dream. You know you have to wake up the wind fish. Ah. And you have conversations with people that's like, hey, this is about to stop existing. Uh, and that's what the bosses say. The bosses are like, hey, wait, stop. You're going to kill us all. You're going to destroy this island. And I have to, I have to prevent you from doing that. And he's like, nope, I need to go home. <laughs> And so he kills all the bosses. So are you are you kind of the bad guy? You are kind yeah, of the bad guy. The but they never yeah. existed to begin with. Guy? So if it, if they're a dream. Yeah, but dude, like Marin, you talk to her, dude, and like but she you, doesn't really exist because it's a dream. In the bonus ending, if you if you I think get like no deaths or something like that, you see her as a seagull flying away. Ooh. So there's some sort of hint. Okay. It's some now sort of like like you know like. Detroit, like, what is human? Is are these people I was talking to within the dream? Do, are they as real as I Can't am? So you turn into uh, like they're animals in real reality. Sounds like a that's cool. Dream. No, just Marin's the only one who gets out. Oh, Everybody okay. else. Just, what were you gonna say, sir? Uh, Kyle, I yeah. love this game. This is mm -hmm. an excellent pick. Uh, and I know it's a Game Boy game. I know that they're working with some limitations, but uh, especially as you get more and more items. Uh, I feel like I got to a point where you constantly have to pause to switch things and that that got to a point where you know it didn't break the game for me but I just wish I didn't have to go into the inventory so much just to switch out two items uh, is that something that ever bothered you at all as you were going through Link's Awakening uh, I'm sure I mean some sometimes you're being creative with it you know what I mean I love that BNA together makes if you, if you have an arrow and a bomb and you press both buttons at the same time, you shoot an arrow with a bomb attached to it. Um, I love that. But yeah, you're right, Ben. I mean, like you, at least it is one menu. You know what I mean? There's no... It's just one menu that like is pretty simple. You know how to swap in and items out of. So yeah, you do have to do that because you only have BNA. But the game makes that as simple as it possibly can. 
Do you really like Big Mac enough to use it as an example? And that was a joke about, like, last time I used the Triforce, and so people with the expectation is, well, they're like, oh, he's, here comes the Triforce again. And, you know, I, I get them with the But don't the you Big think Mac you one. should be able to, like, get it without <laughs> onions and the special sauce, though? Right, do you think that's oh, a good option? Child. I do no pickles on the Big What's up? You said this game no. has very memorable NPCs. Mm -hmm. Can you name five of them for me? Oh, five. he was just on the wiki. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wright. Uh, Mr. Wright? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it Dr. Wright? <clears throat> no. It's Mr. Wright. I'm just uh, double-checking you. <laughs> okay. I believe in you, Kyle. Uh, it's a quiz. Marin. Uh, One minute. Talon? Is that correct? No. It's Taryn? <laughs> yes. yes. Taryn. Okay, Marin and Taryn. One knows it. Uh, the Windfish. <laughs> Link. Think about uh, something yeah, you like, rubs your like. belly, Kyle. I said NPC. Yeah, NPC. Yeah, Windfish yeah. is not an NPC. Or but Link's not an NPC. You name no, no, no. Yeah, somebody yeah. rubs your belly. That's why I said. That's a hint. Blood's helping him out. Mm. No, blood. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca? No. Rebecca? <laughs> damn, this is some damning. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean like because I can say like who the, like the fisherman is in there. Okay. Uh, there's yeah. like the two kids in town. There's the the rooster that died. Uh, uh, Greg, there's Kyle. everybody in. The, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> there's the animal village, the walrus, and uh, there's the witch that's got the witch's brew. Uh, there's there's a lot, and the, the guy Mr. Wright, he's got a lot, writing a love letter Time. to some sheep lady whose name I forgot. Time. Time. <laughs> I have one job crazy on this show. It's stupid, but I'm going to do it. Great job, Charlie. Great job, Great presentation. Great play, Charlie. All right, Kyle, you pick next. Next up is Daniel Bloodworth. Oh boy. Blood, don't bring the Witcher 3. Pin. Pin. Please be the Witcher here. Who brought Witcher already? Uh, I, brought I think Blood is going to bring Dead or Alive 2. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't give you anything. I don't know how long it's going to go. I tried to toss together some notes. It's going to go very well, okay. Blood. Uh. Okay. Alright, when, when you start talking, I Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous until I had to start talking. And I didn't start talking about. <laughs> Me too, bud. <laughs> Same, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Just do your best. Do your best. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, just do, yeah. Alright, uh. We love you. We've got a lot of Nintendo games. <laughs> we love a lot of Nintendo games. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, but today <laughs> I'm bringing Deus Ex. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Dude, I was gonna bring that too. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for the PC. Uh, in 2000, uh, which I didn't play until I think around 2012, not long before the, the sequel came out. Uh, and yeah, Deus Ex is a game that uh, it, it, it blurs the lines of the genres. If you pick a genre, you will be right and you will be wrong at the same time. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's an RPG game. Uh, it's a stealth game. It's a shooter. Uh, it can be any of those things and none of those things, depending on how you play the game. Uh, I guess it's always still somewhat of an RPG. Um, the uh, one thing I was reading, uh, going back through some of the quotes from the developer, they call it adventure games. Like, adventure game, I wouldn't have picked that. But yeah, that's the perception of, of genres back then. Um, and, uh, and it, and it kind of puts all these things together. And they also, the, the, Huber's favorite term, the, the immersive sim. Uh, <laughs> For putting all of that together into uh, a world that uh, feels alive, has different characters, has different uh, locations uh, that you have to investigate and, and explore dialogue trees and go into all of that. Um, but I think that's even more impressive than all these other things that you would normally expect in an RPG or an adventure game is the fact that uh, Deus Ex is designed to really play how you want to play and so you have objectives but you have many different ways of exploring the stage finding a route uh to 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 get to that to to figure out where your enemies are you can decide whether you want to be stealthy whether you want to use non-lethal weapons like a baton or a stun gun or whether you want to hang back and uh use sniper rifle um, you have to be uh, very deliberate with your shots. 
uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, differences in how you can and build your character uh, into very specific things, like whether you build into like heavy weapons uh, or into hacking or into lock picking or even like swimming is one of the <laughs> things that you can invent skill points into uh, to to I think what do they they think they said uh, move like a dolphin. Uh, if you max out that that swimming skill tree, um, and this is this is J C Denton. Uh, just for some context on the story, uh, this is uh, compared to the rest of the Deus Ex series. This is like way beyond uh, the points that you see in all the trailers with like mechanical limbs and stuff. J C Denton is augmented through nano machines, and so he's he's kind of facing off against like all the old guard. Uh, going through this and in his augmentations are, are, they don't require his body to get like changed up and, and do all this craziness uh, but as you go through this game uh, you know there are, there are lots of decisions along the way there are lots of people uh, that can die or that you can rescue um, and and lots of different ways that you can tackle all the objectives and that gives you a lot of uh, reason to replay the game You've got different endings to go after, um, and uh, and then there's and again with the immersive sim stuff, like you've just got like you've got like a government office to walk around and explore, and it's got bathrooms, Kyle. And there's, <laughs> and there's, there's some Easter eggs so tied to bathrooms, and uh, and there's yeah, that's a, that's a nice thing. There's there's some there's just some Easter eggs throughout. There's a lot of good reason to explore this game to just really soak it all in, and um, I I don't think it's necessarily timeless. Uh, I I do think that there's a little bit of adjustment to getting in there. I think that there's a lot of things that they drew from pop culture that don't necessarily hold up as well when you go back to it. But I do think that uh, that you don't necessarily have to be timeless to be great. And I think that everything that they did uh, with what they were working with was very uh, forward thinking and and a lot of games, even if they didn't necessarily borrow it from Deus Ex directly, like this is where the future of gaming was going and Deus Ex got there uh, way before a lot of other people. Three seconds left. <laughs> Blood well, seconds. Good job, blood. That was that was a nice little conclusion, dude. Yeah. 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 Wow. You don't have to be timeless to be they great. Won, yeah. they that won blew race. my mind. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, ah! <laughs> Tango Blood Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, the amount of influence you have in this world is remarkable. Uh, there were things I discovered 15 years later. What is one of your favorite I thought you were saying blood with parts oh. of Deus Ex? One of your favorite uh, things you might have discovered, or or things uh, part of the world that you felt like you impacted. Uh, um, <laughs> Name five doors. I don't know about one impact, one. but I think one of the things I wasn't expecting was there to be like little Jurassic Park dinosaurs running around. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, what? Where? Copies? <laughs> Compies. Basically, uh, yeah, or more to like Dilophosaurus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those aren't so weird. Just because it's sci-fi, it's just like, why not? Yeah, yeah, it's just like one of the things that they're experimenting with, totally these, these so corporations, these mega corporations. <laughs> what do you use your, your dolphin Dino swim skill DNA. for? Is there a practical use for it? Um, I, I think it's just like, an, again, another way to get into areas, like sewer routes, swim into areas, hold your breath longer. Hong Kong has a part where you like can only get there if you're upgrade swimming a little bit because you're like swimming against a stream. This is definitely a rougher one for me because I do not have this game memorized. I played through this game one time a couple of years back. So it wasn't good enough for you to play more than once. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's not true. I have, I actually, a lot of things that would be very curious to go back and try again. You spoke to this Bloodworth, but to, to me as someone, because there's a lot of games at game shows I'd go back for retros or countdowns. And I was like, wow, I've always heard things about this and I want to play it. And I remember booting it up and like, there's no intro text or, you know, cutscene or anything. They just kind of plop, you're in the game. And I was like, oh, it's really dark. I like, kind of see New York in the distance. It was like, 
bad first impression. I'm just not, there's not a lot like bringing me into the game because I did not grow up in PC culture. Like I was not used to immersive Sims at the time. Well, PC. I mean, there wasn't so a thing to be PC used to. This one. <laughs> how should I, yeah, they made I, up that word? How do, <laughs> so someone, so someone like me had a hard time getting into it because of how how much they. I think it, it relies on you to really dig in and not to like kind of invite you into the right. world. How do I get past that? I mean, I think that's a part of its strength, actually. I mean, I was, I mean, like I said, it started off like I was a Nintendo guy, you know? Uh, I played some PC games before I had a Nintendo, but the time, the like Super Nintendo era and when the time the Deus Ex came out, like I was, I was just playing N64 games, man. <laughs> so me going back to it uh, 12 years later uh, and being impressed by, by what it did, I, I think speaks a lot you know and and yeah you have to, you have to invest in it it's a, it's that kind of an rpg where it's like you invest in it you think about the, how you're going to build your character and what you're going to do with it do you like him the sunglasses guy jc do you like him oh yeah they even make fun of that like they draw attention to it right away it's like you're not gonna wear sunglasses at night are you and it's like oh my vision's augmented <laughs> <laughs> damiani has one they do Oh, you're raising your hand. <laughs> he's stretching. He's, stretch. he's, he's, he's got a five NPC. Where does the bathroom no, joke? What is the bathroom joke? Yeah. What is the what is a bathroom Easter egg? Uh oh! If you go into the the women's bathroom, the, your boss scolds you about it. Oh okay. They're later so on in the game. Uh, not too much later on, okay. but he knows. Okay. It's like, what are you doing in the women's restroom? What makes this game, uh, what makes it, like, you're bringing it to Hall of Greats, right? And you said it, it's a game from, you know, a long time ago, which I don't hold it against it. But, like, there have been Deus Ex games since Deus Ex 1. Why not bring those? Like, surely they have improved on things. What, is, what does the number one outing have that, that, that Mankind div, Dividend doesn't? <laughs> one minute also. Um... I think one of the strengths that it probably has is that it it changes environments a lot more. You go through a lot more diversity of areas. Mm. Um, so you kind of start off in New York and dealing with the plague there. And then as Huber mentioned, like you go into Hong Kong and deal with the triads, which kind of feels a lot like uh, Human Revolution. You did that stuff. But then you also go into to Area 51 and you just, you know, Whoa. Fighting aliens and it's like sounds a little hokey. It's a little hokey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, I saw you a little bit. Counter something hokey can also be great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got ten seconds left. Anybody got anything? Not in ten seconds. Are you, are I you, didn't know you could save your brother and save Jock. <laughs> There's like a hundred secrets that. Yellow yellow card. Card. Not a question. That's not a question, yeah, man. Yellow Huber, card. you're on the wrong team. <laughs> yellow <laughs> card. <laughs> team blood. <laughs> team blood. Great job. Very nice. Ten out of ten. Next up, it's Ben. All yeah, right, it's Ben. It's Ben. I don't like our new. <laughs> you just you must. I'm not here to argue. He says after the Deus Ex presentation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stoked for Hey Ben. Hey, what's up, dude? Good luck. Thanks, man. <laughs> Brandon, I just got relief and then stress. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm here to relieve you. Here Thank to relieve you. you. Thank you. Got you. it. You got there. Got there. <laughs> Deus Ex is 139 on Humble Bundle right now. Chat oh, forms. Yeah. <laughs> Probably worth it. <laughs> Check those video settings. It always boots up weird on modern computers. Oh, now you tell us. Yeah, I just bought it. <laughs> Blood, Blood Red. Change my vote. <laughs> yeah, visible word in three. Start. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Ben's trying to start. Or are we waiting for Kyle? I think we're waiting for Kyle. Let's wait, wait for, for Kyle. Kyle. We, we pretend invisible word. I need to feel this. that red sweater behind no, no, me. I did feel that shirt. It's hot. What's the other one that I did? Snowblind or whatever. Yeah. Oh. Or snow is that that's something like that. You know what I thought of? Uh Prince Richard is an is an NPC. Yeah. Forgot yes. that guy. In Deus Ex? Kyle. In in uh, Link's Awakening. Yellow card. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, your time's up, brah. Oh, that does that count? You can talk about yeah, oh, man, oh, not, does that count? You can talk about Deus Ex all you want. You're just making small talk. Who's Rika Lewis? 
That's my brand. Then I strongly suggest just starting out <laughs> listing as many NPCs as you can. <laughs> yeah, get out ahead of it. Uh, that would be hard to do. Just, oh, just oh no, oh, man. It's not going to work out. Then, it's, just, it's a bad night. Just it's let me present the game. Here we go. Okay, ready when you are, man. It is no secret that Easy Allies uh, is a fan of a company known as Nintendo. We <laughs> sing the praises of things like Mario and Metroid and Zelda ad nauseum. Uh, we, we've, we're good at that, but even we have blind spots. Even we uh, have failed to give proper recognition to a series that over the last couple of years has really grown to become precious to me. A game series that I think deserves to be there along with every single thing else in the Hall of Greats. And that is... The gimmick. Pikmin. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> the reveal. I did not. I, you got me, man. I could. I could probably make a case for any of the three main Pikmin games being in Hall of Greats, but I've decided to go with Pikmin One because no. their games are all oh. so different. <laughs> They all do different things, and there are things that Pikmin 1 does that the other two don't do, and I'm going to explain that, and I'm going to explain why it deserves to be here. Pikmin does so much with so very little. You, a spacefaring pirate named Olimar, you're stranded on this strange planet, and you have to go and recover parts for your ship. But it's not just some video game objective where you can do it however long you want. You have 30 days, the planet is poisoning you, and if you don't get out of there, you're, you're doomed. You can't, you can't survive. And because of that time limit, because you're always aware of how long a day will take, Pikmin makes the most minute decisions matter. Uh, which Pikmin are a part of your team? How mature they are? Where do you go? How many Pikmin you assign to a task? And how you engage them in combat can all have a super dramatic impact on how successful you are. Along with that, these Pikmin aren't just like simple resources that you don't you get and you don't think about. They have so much nuance to them. There's a deceptive amount of nuance. Every single Pikmin has a clearly defined role and you have to think about that when you're going and it changes depending on the objective that you do. Red Pikmin, they're the strongest. They're going to help you out the most during a fight, but they're also resistant to fire. Don't forget about it. <laughs> yellow. You know that yellow electricity, they're not going to be bothered by that. Did you also know you can throw them higher. Don't forget about that. It's not only key to getting some parts, it's also key to fighting certain enemies. Blue Pikmin, they, they, now this sounds deceptive, but they can swim. And you're like, oh, they can swim, that's boring. No, there are parts, water is dangerous for all the other Pikmin. And so you're really gonna need to rely on those blue Pikmin to get you where you need to go to collect those special parts. But I want to talk about the bad feelings that Pikmin can give you and why those bad feelings are actually part of why it makes you great. You learn by doing in Pikmin. That first time when you go and you Pikmin get stranded and you leave them behind, uh, you'll see a cutscene at the end of the day of your Pikmin getting eaten. Hmm. You feel sympathetic to these things that just want to help you. And when you have that experience, when you feel like you lost something, that next day it pushes you to be like, wait a minute, let me think about this a little bit more. Uh, let me strategize a little bit better. Let me think about my Pikmin composition a little bit better. Let me make sure that I know what I'm doing before I commit to a decision because I don't want to lose the little guys anymore. Um, yeah, it forces you to take a step back and reevaluate. Uh, you wouldn't feel this if Pikmin didn't push you so hard. Uh, along those same lines, enemies also feel threatening. Enemies are, are, are fearsome because if you lose Pikmin, you lose how you do everything in this world. You're basically worthless without these Pikmin. And so when you encounter a big enemy, it feels threatening. Also, if these Pikmin die, that means you have to waste this precious, precious time One going minute. and getting more Pikmin. Uh, and that is time that you could be spending getting more parts, building up your army a little bit better. Um, and the very last thing that I want to touch upon is I think Olimar is a better protagonist than he's often given credit for. Uh, he's not just a nameless avatar. It's not like he, he doesn't have any voice of his own. He absolutely has a voice. He 
uh, along with being in this dangerous situation, along with being on this planet, he has a fascination with these creatures. He has a fascination with these Pikmin. And that fascination kind of makes him endearing. It kind of gives you a spark of hope. It kind of gives you a reason to root for him. Uh, and his narration throughout the entire journey, however many days it takes you to get all those ship parts, uh, really humanizes and contextualizes the experience. And you see him go through a, a, a range of motions. And that makes the journey a lot more investing than it would be if it was just those so sweet mechanics. Time. Ooh, bang. Wow. Well, Ooh. well done, time wise. Rehearsed it. <laughs> I didn't rehearse it, actually. I did make a lot of notes, but. Nice job, man. <sighs> I'll start the timer when someone starts talking. Jones, you can you can take yeah. this one, Jones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never done it, but can you fail this game? Like, can you get to a point where like so you cannot I've beat the game now because you're you're out of Pikmin, you don't have enough. That's how it's like a Dead Rising thing where like I've always been curious. Like, man, I would hate to get like invest like five six hours into this game and then realize like, I got to start over because I just I wasn't good at this game. You know, it took me a while to get good at it. Yeah. Um, so the two things that there, there is a there's a bad ending that you can get. So yes, you oh. can you can fail in that sense, um, but also uh, in this thirty days you can complete it before then. So you're you're gonna have bad days. You're gonna have days where you do fail. But failing a day isn't like oh man, I, it's it's so tight that just because I had this one bad day I have to restart the whole thing. You have to fail pretty consistently for a long period of time to completely fail. Like not. A mistake or a series of mistakes is not the end of you. Uh, little little glitchy, would you say? Just a little bit, just because you have to manage all these little dudes and like glitchy in what way? Uh, I just remember there are times when I realized there was one Pikmin left, and I'm like, let me try to get over there, and I'm calling him, but it it's not. It's like caught on the environment or blocked in a way. Oh, you mean it's, like they're pathing? And, and, and granted, this is just me being a perfectionist, but like you know, it, like it, it, do you ever get a sense of stress? And I know that's part of it, but like when you have all these little things and they're just not quite doing what you want them to do, and you have to like separate them. Uh, yeah, so the, you, your Pikmin can definitely get caught on things, especially in Pikmin 1. Uh, but I would actually argue that that is another thing where if you kind of take the time to reflect, uh, you'll, you'll end up learning something. You can, you can make it better for yourself. So I think it's easy to get in this sense of, I'm always going to bring 100 Pikmin with me. We're rolling hard. We're rolling deep. Um, and with that, like, you, you have to think, like, oh, man, if I have 100 Pikmin, it's going to be easier for me to lose them. So depending on what I'm doing... I might just bring 20 Pikmin with me. I might right. just bring 30 Pikmin with me. And so you won't have that happen in the same way. And so, uh, yes, pathing can be an issue, but there are things that you can do to mitigate it. Is it... I, I haven't played this one, but it, yeah. does, is it kind of just one one idea throughout the whole game? Does it evolve? I mean, I know you get new Pikmin, but like, does so, it maintain your interest? Yeah, all? absolutely. Uh, it's a great question, Ian. So di I would think of it as like different Pikmin add new layers to the game and new ways to interact with the world because the Pikmin can quite very literally do different things. Mm. Um, and they, it's not like you get all three Pikmin very quickly. They're, they're really spaced out throughout the uh. game. Um, and so it's like, okay, you start with the red Pikmin, then you get the yellow Pikmin, and then finally you get the blue Pikmin. And uh, with the red Pikmin, uh, you know, you, you throw them at average height, uh, you, you're resistant to fire, they're good at fighting, but then you get the yellow Pikmin, and it's like, oh man, even areas that I've been to before, it's like, I couldn't open these doors. And so it kind of has that Metroid feeling, where you want to not only push ahead, because now you have the resources to do that, but you also want to come back and see what new things you can get involved in. Um, so yeah, it, it changes... Like, both the new levels keep introducing new things, and past levels also expand a lot. Nice. Why isn't nice. this game on Switch? I can't, <laughs> I don't have the answer to that. Is one... Is one... Is one better than two? So, it, it, I was really uh, struggling to... I, I don't... I'm not ready to, like rank them what i will say is pikmin 1 is very different than pikmin 2 which is very different than pikmin 3. they all kind of have the same idea but it's like they interpret it very very differently mm. like their entire structure is pretty different um three kind of feels like a mix of one and two in some ways but also not 
Um, and so it, it's not like strictly better. It's just kind of like taking One this minute. idea and twisting it a little bit. Cool. Hmm. How about that last level where it's just a straight path to the boss, but you have to split up your Pikmin? Basically, they it's, it's like lanes. It's like League of Legends lanes. And then you have to just take whatever you do into that last boss who just eats your Pikmin. There's like no way to do a perfect run on that boss. Do you like that? Um, so the last level, as far as the obstacle course goes, I, I think it's actually the most challenging. And I think it's probably the single area in the game where it, it forces you to know your Pikmin inside and out more than ever. Um, like, I really had to think, like, okay, how, how, like, yes, I need all three of my Pikmin. How am I going to do this? Um, but I also like the final fight because, again, I think it kind of reinforces what the whole game is about. Like, Pikmin 1 kind of beats you over the head and it says, listen, man, sometimes things are going to be messy. And, like, there's this moment when you're going into the final boss and you're like, I'm going to lose, like, 50 of these guys. That's kind of beautiful. Let's jump in. Hold on, very nice. Pick a card, man. Pick a card, pick a man. card. Oh, yeah. Pick a card. Yeah, pick a card. Damiani! Oh, Damiani, you need me to click the thing? Uh, one to the best. Yes. Okay. Just, uh, yes. Yes. Click. 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 Yes. Click. Click. Boom. Remember Click with Adam Sandler? Yeah, man. Sad movie. Yeah, don't yeah, watch that. Yeah, that movie sad. <laughs> yeah, man. Sad Trying to forget it. Weaponized quaintness. <laughs> He's proud, yeah, look, He's proud of that one. You know, it's pretty quaint. It draws you in. Pikmin. That movie draws you in. Oh, this is just another funny, dopey Adam Sandler flick. We just want to hear him do voices, and then you're crying, man. Sure. Don, are you not Man, I cry in movie? episodes of Goth. I never saw Flick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Huber weeps often. I weep often, Kyle. <laughs> uh, Kyle. Yeah. So, it is, uh, some music to play. Uh... I'll when, Signal? I, when I say the title. Shoot. Okay. When you can play music. Mm -hmm. And my name is for my game entry. Gotcha. So just click and click. Okay. I'm ready, baby. Yeah. You should do a song. I think Bruce Almighty and Click had almost an identical trailer. Is that true, Jones? <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you to so click. Me? That's my memory. Yeah. Couldn't tell you to click trailer. Don't click remember. Click reminded me too much of the Bruce Almighty trailer. So, so just, he believes in you. Oh, thank you. So okay. oh, you weren't thanks. here before. I will do a whole hour stream of this. <laughs> yes. She won't. I know. Bane, dude. Bane is coming. See, she's already over here. That's so, oh, that's my You know what? What? I did forget that click, how click ends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, the And remote? it's Christopher Walken just like, hey, that was all a dream. Yeah. yeah oh, it was. No. Link's Awakening, yeah. dude. Don't worry. Yeah. It's, like, no, that, that, it's more Link's like Mario Awakening Brothers nonsense. Dude. You learned to appreciate life more Link's now, Awakening didn't you, Adam like, Sandler? Like like <laughs> You'll love you, driving in traffic now. Do you remember the trailers? It every day. Oh. Do you remember the trailer to Oh, click? yeah, just like some guy getting power. But dude. was it the, exactly the same as Bruce Almighty trailer? The click trailer? Yeah. yeah. I Aren't they the same? Maybe similar. similar. Probably pretty yeah. similar. <laughs> Aren't they around the same And then time? there's like the Simon Pegg, like literally everything, or what is it? Move? Like where he can, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's a genre. Wow. All right, which uh, one of those three <laughs> makes boobs grow? I'm positive. Uh, that's that's Bruce, Bruce Almighty. Almighty. Bruce Almighty. That's a very... Bruce, Bruce Almighty makes boobs grow. Click, he makes a woman run in slow motion. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got Bruce, it, they you. both have problems. <laughs> what about Flubber? What's the Chevy Chase one? The remake or the original? What's the No, the Chevy Chase one where he gets... You watch the... Reason that he's the kitchen he's like hey, ooh, <laughs> not whatever but uh whatever it was yeah, kind of the same scene I just remember yeah, I know yeah, I know yeah, 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 yeah. hot tub time what about machine he's on the can he's also Zach what's the other yeah, duck professors and Doc is in that felt like a ball in the same the same guy the same guy Zach and that is my whole great presentation thank you dude Flubber Flubber is a 10 Nutty uh, Professor was so funny. I brought Something Flubber like that, tonight. No. All right, who's keeping the time? I thought you said Glover. Right. Ian. Okay. Right. Or Ian um, is. Okay. Last right. night in the studio, baby. Woo! All right. Six days of Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> Woo! All right. Ever since I've been a, a little kid, I have been completely infatuated with, with space and space exploration. Uh, growing up uh, as a young kid... Uh, I watched every night Star Trek The Next Generation, and I kind of grew up on that show, and one of the things that always stuck with me was the, uh, the new dangers the Enterprise would get into every single week. Um, 
whether it was you know, Q trolling uh, Picard in some of the best moments, coming across the board, coming across the Ferengi, the Cardassians. Uh, someone contracted a rare virus thing that's mutating them. And they got to figure out how to stop it. There are always, it highlighted the perils of space, but uh, always put like a, a, an emphasis on teamwork and solving it through through science and resources and sometimes Dex Machina stuff. Um, and I feel that through the years, there have been many attempts to, to kind of capture that spirit, um, at least in my opinion. And I had high hopes for, for Mass Effect. That's not my game. Um, <laughs> it didn't come. It didn't quite live up to it in the end. <laughs> but one game finally did after all that trilogy finally came out. And that one game is FTL yeah. oh. Faster Than Light. Wow. FTL Faster Than Light is a very, on the surface, is a very simple game. Uh, you are a ship in the Galactic Federation that is trying to outrun... Oh. Well, uh, uh, the human uh, rebellion that is trying to that is trying to basically destroy you, and your goal is you have to jump from point to point across this map in a roguelike, in order to reach the next sector until you can reach the final sector, um, to to relay your your plans to the, the to your reinforcements and make a last stand against the the rebels like mothership, and each jump there's these little points on the map that just like look innocuous they say like here 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 and you never know what's going to happen on the other side you you pick from a, a a catalog of different ship types um you're limited at first but eventually they'll expand um and they each have their different sections so you have uh you have the the, the command area you have engineering you have weapons you have uh medical you have like a oxygen area and these areas all work into your ships along with the weapon systems and the shields and you have to micromanage all of these in various situations where you can come across completely benign alien species who's like, hi, we just need help. And if you agree to help them, they might give you a new crew member. They might give you more resources because you're also fighting against uh, the aggregation, the, the, sorry, the uh, diminishing, depleting resources that you have. Every jump consumes fuel. You have only so much HP. And if you get into a battle, you have to try and repair the HP, but you can't repair unless you get to a shop. And shops, you never know where they might be. And every time you make a jump, you might come across an enemy who's, you can choose to ignore them. You might even get a third option. You can fight, you can flee, or if you've met certain conditions, you can do a third option, which mean, which is really interesting because you gotta try and figure out, how did I get to that point? And you're never really prepared for any of these situations, but each jump, you basically gotta figure out what the situation is, micromanage your crew, take take on the enemies or deal with the situation, and then after the results, you got to prepare for your next jump. So it's just this constant kind of like struggle against the unknown. And the best part is this game, you are supposed to lose. You are really, it, it is very hard, even on the normal difficulty, you are supposed to fail. And the best part of that game, in my opinion, is the different ways your journey will end. Whether it's fires broke out and you couldn't get them under control because the doors were disabled and they were set to they were set to be open so that the vacuum of space was just like suffocating you as well because you thought you were putting out the fires but now you can't shut them so you're all gonna die. Or just being overwhelmed by an enemy that can cloak, has drones that, that can take out any of your missiles that you try and fire at it. They just overwhelm you and you can't flee because it's an electrical storm and your your navigation is knocked out so you can't make the jump to, oh, your crew member, you're down to one crew member and uh, they just died in a fire. And now you have no more crew members so your ship's just adrift. It's just so many different ways your journey could end. And those moments of panic, trying to figure out the, if there's a way to get out of this alive is one of the best things. And the situation they put you in, you just always wanna, like you know, don't don't beam down to that surface. You don't no no don't do it. But you know I might get a new character. Not, not, oh, someone died. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you lost the character. It's like I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? You just like question yourself. But it's so quick. Time. Yeah. <laughs> it's so quick. Time. Uh -huh. Sorry, Tommy. Oh, so close. The speaker wasn't on. I'm sorry. I blew the timing. Well, that's fine. What? Oh, that's Good. fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Hi.
Uh, this is not a game I hear you talk about that much. I'm surprised. He streams it. If it okay, uh-huh. has it really? Uh-huh. Yeah, I streamed it. He has streamed I, it. I I, I um, gave these the allies a ship once, and I named all of us crew members great. as best as I could. And we all died. Terribly. And we all died at the end. It was nice. pretty good. So that is cannon. Well, it, there you go. Um, do you think the the dice roll nature of some of the events makes them a a bit um too random that you can see the same thing and you you can never really gauge what the best course of action could be. I feel like the the best answer to that, Bloodworth, is that there you can start to see a pattern in terms of the limitations of the the types of decisions you're going to be making. So you 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 know what to kind of expect to be played enough times that ah, I've seen a similar situation. This these are probably going to be the following outcomes. But at the same time, I think the the, the struggle is which direction do you want to go to build up for readiness? I don't think you can prepare for any situation. You either go, do I want to focus on, I like for me personally, I want to focus on shields. I want as much defense and early goings because I can survive any kind of attack and I'm not going to, ch- and I'm not going to take any chances on uh, sending crew away at the beginning. I want to like keep my crew intact, but later on, if like at the payoff is I'm expecting to build up resources so I can outfit my offensive. But no matter shields is going to save you when you have a ship that's like just pounding you and you can't fight back and you can't flee fast enough. So uh, I do think that I do really like the the, the, the franticness of that. I like I do like the R- the RNG factor. Um, I do think it can be a little brutal sometimes. Um, there are a lot of times I'll scream that's like kind of unfair, but you know. I don't know about like if you reflected on every single playthrough. If you really evaluate what you did, did did RNG really screw you over there, or was there like you know was it luck? I would probably side with yes, but or was there something I really could have done to prepare for that and and not been in, screwed myself in that situation? That that was the problem I was having with this game is that I felt because I played a lot of this game when it came out and like. I always felt, like, and I'm not like the best at games like this. Roguelikes usually I, I'm not great at them, but it definitely felt like most of the time there there weren't strategies I could have employed to to get me there. Yeah, and like you know, the closest I got, I was just like, I got a good run. So that's the thing. I feel like you're kind of praying for the the one run where it goes right. But I think the the strength of that game is along every. Every single attempt is meaningful because each one is kind of like a unique story for you. And as I said, I feel like it's very interesting and, and enjoying and rewarding to see how your journey ends because you expect failure. Right. So I think when things go right longer, it, it's so much more satisfying and gratifying. And the thing I was trying to finish before my time right now is that this game is so can be so quick to get back into. Yeah. That when you fail, you just start up again. And like, okay, I know the first sector is not that bad. So Let me more jump like around. Solitaire kind of. Yeah. Or like you can get good time, dude. What's up? Are you ever having a good time just exploring space? Yeah, so that's the thing. Early on in each sector, you do not have to rush to the end. I mean, it'll show you where your destination is to make the safe jump, but the the rebel forces don't catch up immediately. They will slowly encroach on the map, and it'll show you, hey, if you get in here, you're going to fight them. If you're here, you're done. So it gives you a bit of time before they show up to kind of do a few jumps. But remember, exploration also costs resources, so maybe, like, I love this. You might find a quest. And I'll be like, hey, if you help us on this quest, you're going to get a good reward. It might not be a good reward. It might be an awesome reward. It might get a cool new missile or laser that will, like, give you a huge advantage. Or it might just give you, like, 20 fuel. It's like, eh, okay, that's cool. But, I mean, those moments are really awesome to see, like, how it's going to play out. And it's just so quick to get back to those spots, I feel. Even, like, a full playthrough of you to succeed doesn't take that long. Have you have you beaten it? Have you I've beaten it once on normal. Or yeah. twice on normal. Sorry, normal and FDL Advanced Edition I've beaten it. I think, yeah, I think I've... I've never beaten it on hard. I've never gotten to the end. Never beaten it on hard. Yeah. 40 seconds left. What does it take to beat it on hard? Um, Probably really good RNG and probably a different ship loadout. Um, You unlock new ships, right? Yeah, there are more advanced ships that that, that definitely give you a better advantage. Um, You probably have to, like, focus on different elements of those ships to, to build them up. But I generally defer to the easier ships. There are definitely difficulties for how ships uh, will help you out. Like the long game, essentially. Do you, always, think, that's, do you think that's crappy that you can't, basically like can't win with the starter ship? I think you can. No, it's I, harder, I, I, way harder. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like a progression system. Yeah, I guess, I guess it, you're right. It's another layer to the game. Yeah, yeah. Also, the music's awesome. 
<laughs> uh, time. Yep. Great job, Damian. Yay! An unforeseen hit. Oh boy! Don, baby. See this video. Don, 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 don. I gotta throw out a yellow card for adding also the music's awesome unprovoked. <laughs> that was extra layer. You can't add just extra layers? Yeah, it's the ship's music. It's related to the, the ship. ship. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Do they? Oh, yeah, yeah. This game could be anything. Oh. It could be anything. Your race determines... Is it on Switch? Uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> I have it, like, on everything else. It might be. Is it on phone or Switch? I want to play it. It's on iOS. I, yeah, play I feel it like you would want a mouse. Is it on iOS? Right, okay. on. On. It's on iOS, sure. I think. Well, I guess you oh, can damn. pause a lot. You don't oh, damn. Let me check if it's on Android. FTL is not on Switch. Yet. Android. Yeah, I didn't think it was on Switch. Uh, oh, that's points Switch? against. That's points against, Damiani. <laughs> I didn't say it was on Switch. <laughs> I know, but we like games that but are on Switch. We did. like games that are on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> not on Android. Maybe on tablet. Shouldn't yes. have done that. All right. Good luck, say. Thank you, Damiani. Right. Uh, Don. So you said you want this picture in picture or full screen? Oh, full screen is fine. Okay, so let me get this ready. Does it have whichever is easier for you? Yeah, I got audio. Whatever's Last easier to set not up, on Switch. Either right way, it's fine. Great point. Oh, it's Switch. So, Don, do you want this? Uh, in? Are you going to talk over this? I'm going to be talking over it. So, whatever's easier to set up with the cameras, it doesn't okay. matter. Do you want? And you want no audio? No, that else is on Switch. No audio on the video. The okay, cool. No audio in the video is confirmed. <laughs> that's what we just said. Oh, that's, okay. that's what we just said. Hold Hubert. Hold Hubert. That's what we just said. Are you going to come up and start the video or something? Okay. Surprisingly savage. Surprisingly. I didn't mean that to me. Okay. <clears throat> ready, everybody? Yep, yeah. ready. Ready, everybody? Here we go. Damiani? I'm ready. Roll it. Okay, the game I'm nominating today is oh, Trials yeah. Fusion. Okay, the reason I'm nominating Trials Fusion is because to the Hall of Greats is I think that it reaches greatness as a platformer. I think it reaches greatness as a level editor game. And I also think it reaches greatness as a multiplayer game. Okay, those are three things we'll focus on. First, platformer. Okay, the control here is tight. The control is tight as a drum. Please refer to the video as I'm talking, okay? Uh, you need to, uh, you're riding along on your motorbike here, all right? You need to ma manipulate your speed. You're working with your memory, your reaction time. You're traversing this environment. A lot of times, it doesn't feel like you're riding a motorcycle. It becomes kind of like a parkour on wheels, okay? It's all about momentum. You have to stop. You have to uh, climb very often and flip and do all sorts of different unexpected maneuvering in order to traverse uh, successfully. But the timer is what's really key. They add in the timer because it's all about being faster and more flawless on your run and that's the goal is to reach this kind of perfection in this in your gameplay uh, where there's always a new way to increase and go a, a millisecond faster you know every half second and quarter second and millisecond in this game is very meaningful this is engaging your sympathetic nervous system <laughs> guys. okay to the max heart rate blood flow uh, transferring in your body pupil dilation okay when you're performing at a high level level in this game it's very similar to being it's the feeling of being in a lucid trance is how i feel okay i've been told and i've read that many athletes when they're performing at a very high level in their sport they feel this sort of euphoric sense internally and this is the same feeling you have in trials when you're performing at a high level you, my point is you feel it physically when you play and it feels Good, okay, it's very engaging. We gotta move on to the, oh, let me tell you, look, the <laughs> levels, okay, creative, smart, challenging, and satisfying. There's uh, dozens of levels uh, designed in this game and they're so thoughtfully done and a lot of times there's great challenge to them, but it's a fair challenge, it's satisfying, it's always on you and your skill because the control is tight, okay? Level editor, look at this, this is remarkable. Every single asset you see in this game is available, that's very hard for people to actually wrap their head around. You watch the trailer for the new one, every single thing in the foreground, background, and in the game is available to you to play as. What does that mean? Look, Mario Maker, you play a game like Mario Maker, which also maybe is up there in the Hall of Greats one day. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, they've got a lot of assets they give you, but the equivalent in trials to compare it so that you understand what I'm saying, in Mario Maker, they give you a question block. In trials, you would get every single component used to create that image of that question mark and then every single one of those components can then be manipulated okay so the tools are deep and all-encompassing we can see this because people have created first-person shooters driving tetris like puzzle games this is not necessary to do and it doesn't appeal to me but when you see people execute it well you realize
realize, wow, these tools are really deep and uh, powerful, okay? This is what the game does as a level editor that's so incredible, though, that's so hard to do. This is one of the reasons games like Project Spark ultimately sort of, you know, didn't succeed. One of the reasons, very possibly, that Dreams has had such a series of delays. One of the hardest things to do is for a level editor game to always remain a game as you're doing level editing, to not become work, okay? In Mario, the simple act of controlling Mario and just walking and jumping is such a satisfying feeling, the same way just riding your motorbike, accelerating, and the fact that you constantly, there's a constant integration of level design and play test. It's hand in hand. There's never the stretch of time you have to go through to design something before you can start to enjoy it. Constant enjoyment. That's very hard to do. That's why you see so few games achieve this that are level editors. And what can I say? The community is the best community there is. I mean, they are still supporting this game, uh, Red Lynx is, but the community is still minute. designing stuff for this game and incredible stuff. And how cool that Red Link, uh, you know, and Ubisoft have stayed with the community in such an involved way to the point where, uh, you know, some of their official DLC has featured tracks by some of the most creative designers in the community. It's one of the most rewarding things they could have done. It's, it's, it's just awesome to see. Real quick, we'll just talk about the multiplayer. You can see it right here. What greater level of intensity is there? You want to talk about your sympathetic nervous system being engaged. <laughs> you have riders simultaneously, side by side, every single mistake you make, you see immediately the consequences right here. We're ahead of them. The moment I mess up, one second that guy behind me is past me. I can't afford to make a single error here. What's gonna happen? <laughs> Oh, I don't no. know. Oh. That could have been an error, but it wasn't. God, this feels good right now. Look at this. You keep on going. You're going, what a run. This is incredible. This guy's on my heels, though. This is obviously a great run, so I'm proud of it, right? But look, when it happens, it happens, baby. The game is good. The Time. game is great. Make it happen tonight. Let's do this. <laughs> That was great, though. Yeah! Man. And I made it in time! Yeah, Woo! you did it! First yeah. time! Yeah. First time! Yeah. <sighs> Alright. Hey. Damn! Don't hold back. Uh, Don, this is the kind of game uh, where they, they, they actively give you hints about secrets and encourage you to look for secrets. Hmm. Uh, and in some cases, it can be... Uh, very interesting level designs and very rewarding. Other cases, you just give up because you feel like you've jumped into every possible hole there is on the map and there's still no idea of where you're supposed to go and you just kind of get frustrated mm -hmm, with, mm -hmm. with basically pixel hunting. Yeah, no, Blood is talking about these uh, hidden items that they have as, a, you know, extra challenges. They have all kinds of extra challenges in the game. So that, it, yeah, it goes beyond just, it's not just about the fastest time with the least amount of wrecks, the least amount of checkpoints, you know. Uh, they add a whole checklist of hidden things you can find and checklist of special gameplay challenges you can accomplish to make the game more difficult. You're talking about the hidden item thing, I think, mostly, and... Yeah, what can I say? Some of the hidden item things are mind-bogglingly confused. I mean, difficult to find to the point where it truly is, where you say, wait, I've scanned this entire map. I've crashed through every single... But well, that's what those are there for. You know, these are extreme challenges that, look, if there's a treasure hunter, if that's the nature of what you enjoy in the game, talk about satisfaction when you find one. I mean, they're all there. They exist. It's not mm. like they're, you know, but yeah, are some of them the most impossible things you'd never think of but when you do think of it the revelation the reward of that revelation is so great you know what i'm saying that's like so it can be tough if you're like hey i'm all about 100 percenting the game but for me i like playing games for you know i don't mind playing the same game my entire life so we're talking about the hall of greats i'm talking about a game i want to be stuck on a desert island for this is the only game i can have on that desert island i'm gonna want those things all those little last checkpoints Don, to be i'm gonna go ahead and i'm very, gonna call shenanigans on that okay go ahead Shenanigan because we're getting a, we're getting a new trials game yeah this year yeah that will supersede this one. The community will transition to the new trials game, yeah. and then this one will fall off forever. But what does that have to about? You what, said no? you could play this game forever. Absolutely, no. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, one of the considerations I put into my mind when I'm considering Hall of Greats is: mm -hmm. Would this game? I'm not talking about the next game. I'm talking about this game. Yes. Out of all these ten games I choose from tonight, 
which one of these would I, which ones of these would I most like to be stuck on a desert island for the rest of my life with? Which ones of these games could I like replay and replay and replay? The, the irony is that one right. of them is about if being stuck, on a, stuck on a desert island. If I was stuck on a desert island, yeah, which ones would I choose? Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Do, are, are people still making interesting levels for that game today? Yes. Truly. 100%. Like new, interesting, I've not seen that before levels. Yes. <laughs> okay. But Don, outside of DLC, how do I find those levels? Does the cream rise to the top? Like, if I'm just jumping in now, I've never played Fusion before, yeah. and I'm like, I can't give this company more money to, to get the extra DLC, I just want to go in and find stuff, yeah. is that a difficult process to, to find that stuff, or is, am I just oh, kind of no. rolling the dice I, I wish every time I download one or check out a new level? That's the thing about Fusion that they did so good, that's why I'm you know, nominating Fusion over uh, Evolution or something. They refine that process so much, I wish I would have put that into the graphics so that you could see when you're choosing a track, they have like, you know, 20 different subcategories. The way they break it up, you can look for not just like the certain type of track, but the the rating, you know, they're all rated and everything. So yeah, it's very easy to not just find like a specific type of track because people make all types of different, you know, whether it's a stunt track or whatever it may be, but then you can find the highest rated of those or the most oddball, or they have all sorts of different categories of cross-referencing. So it's like you can endlessly play the community stuff, but the... I mean, Red Links themselves supported the game with like something like six or seven different DLC packages that all had a ton of courses. And the last one was like practically a whole game in itself. And a lot of it is free and they're still supporting it right now. I mean, you go on there, you still play online. It's incredible. One minute. Do you think they really have did as much as they could compared to a lot of these other games? Like, you look at the original Legend of Zelda and then you look at Link's Awakening, like, you know, uh, The Last of Us compared to, like, the first Uncharted games. Do you think in the... This is the, the third Trials, right? Fusion? Uh, yeah. Do you think well, the series yeah. evolved enough that they did as, as much as some of these other entries to really, you know, a, 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 a development process worthy of greatness 100%. to bring themselves at Fusion? Or is it just kind of like... You know, it, it ain't broke, so don't fix it. No. You got they got such a good thing going with how good this game feels. No, it's a hundred percent. Yeah, they refine. They continued to refine it, and in the mo the multiplayer aspect is really where they refined it, and they really improved it because it was good before, but in the new one, it worked so much better. And also, just they added teams and whole tournament leagues, which made it so fun. You know, worldwide rankings, all that worked so good. It just really makes it like an obsessive kind of quality to it. I mean, really, they didn't not refine Time. any aspect. Nice job. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Next up, uh oh, the star. Oh, you want the Miss Jones one? Oh, no. So we got Jones and Brad left? Like? Okay. Yep, it is possible. What you got, Brad? Um, oh, I got something. What you bringing? Don't worry. I'm Brad, 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 hope you just bring King of Hearts 3. Night, or Arkham City. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. That's, That's it. Something guaranteed. That's Play the trailer. It. Yep, thank you very much. Brad, I'm going to be very happy. He's going for an easy three points right there. Yeah. You think I bring Asylum over City? No. Oh, you're right. City's much yeah. more of a I said game. City. I said Asylum more City. Yeah. You should know. That Huber panel. It shouldn't be a question. <laughs> Sophie, what's your favorite Arkham game? It's okay. I like, I like the Batmobile stuff in Night 2. I thought it was fine. Overpowered. I know. The ending was a little predictable, but I thought, you know, it was a great way to wrap it up. It was really dramatic. That's Sophie's favorite. I didn't get all the achievements either. It's fine. You don't have you don't have to platinum every game, Sophie. Don't, don't feel bad. I will now add you. Jones, this is best presentation. I get the impression said, she knows John, what I'm doing. That was mean. fantastic. I knew like I'm uh, just because I. Does she know? Me. I don't know. <laughs> she got yeah. it in under time. <laughs> that feels great. like a win. I don't know. That's, she's that's she's very she's compelling. very. She wow. killed me today because we went to shoot tabletop. And you guys were like, all right, and you all sat down, and she like walked out and went to the back door, like they're about to shoot tabletop. We should go inside. Yeah. It's like just crazy how synced into her schedule she's got, but she'll be okay. I think it might be a couple, a couple weeks of just like, wait a minute, why, you know? Yeah. Because the the, the neighbor's gate kind of sounds like our gate, so every now and then she'll like perk her head up and be like, nah, that's the neighbor's, and like maybe she'll get a little more intense when that happens, like maybe, but I think over time she'll, you know. She'll get used to it. Oh, she'll get used to it. Oh, I missed it. I, mm, I, I saw everything. I, I saw it. I, I it was too late. I already saw everything. I wanted them. <laughs> I didn't. I was just looking ahead and I saw it. All right. But yeah, Sylvie will be stopping by the new studio, no question. Yeah. 
and we'll make regular appearances on Cup of Jones in my personal streams. We will do Sophie focused streams. Sophie, I expect you to join me on Plate of Bands. It starts off really quiet, so just like leave it kind of loud and then adjust. Ooh, blood getting the dew. Yeah. Nice. Hey. That was a party. You were blood getting the dew. That was a blood going to do. What's blood going to do? Late night, early morning. Are you going to help me? About 6 a.m. What's the difference, man? We're, someone's in the restroom? Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to nominate Sophie for all of this. Me too. Oh, me too. Good puppy. Good puppy. We're like at the end of my entry, and I'm like, and I happen to know this is Sophie's favorite game. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Already you brought, got me. I already brought Mist. <laughs> Mist is Sophie's favorite. Yeah, chat. We, uh, her, her paws on the mouse, just <laughs> staring at the screen for a long time. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Yeah, but I, Huber, I was your approval right now the last thing, like Click. three minutes. 7.57 yep. a.m. <laughs> three minutes to spare. Yeah. It went live, but you did it three minutes it w- to spare? Yeah. No, 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 it didn't go live. Three was, minutes before the embargo. Yeah. No, so yeah, you were done. Yeah. Yeah, I, thought I, was, like, it's good. I thought it was random. nine, not eight. Oh, okay. oh look at uh, me. No, you wrote it down wrong at first. Wow. Oh, okay. Um, I have a video this time. Uh, but I will talk over it. Um, but it has music, and it's exactly five minutes long, so Woo! I don't need to time it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I guess well, that won't sync up. Uh, so I'll wait for the video to start and then start talking, I guess. Right. So whenever you want, Damiani. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Bloodborne, though. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember if I brought her last time also, uh, but I think I did. Oh, right, because I did that thing where I just played my <laughs> my presentation the previous <laughs> time. The so this is my third salty run back <laughs> on uh, Bloodborne, I guess. But here's the deal. This game is really good, though. Like, <laughs> the, the combat is airtight, and the story is engaging and interesting, and it doesn't get in its own way. And I've replayed this game so many times, and it's still engaging to watch and go through. Um, the different weapons have different gameplay styles uh, that completely change kind of the way you have to think about this game. And I think that can't be overlooked. Similar to like Monster Hunter World or something, where it it plays different enough that it you could get a whole new experience going through in a new way. Um, and like Don was talking about with the sympathetic nervous system, like, uh, when you get that feeling of mastery in a game like this, or after it's been beating you down for hours and hours and hours, and then you finally get past that part that you've been stuck on, I don't know if there's a better feeling in video games, honestly, for me, like, your blood is pumping, like, I'm getting jazzed up just, like, looking at this, um, and, uh, We'll see if anyone can guess where this footage is from. But, um... Oh, Bloodborne. It, it has... Just... The, the, grit, the feel of playing this game is just... It's like... It's like getting into a, a pool of, like, I don't even know, milk of magnesia. And just kind of, like, rolling around. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> You've never done that? <laughs> You play but, Bloodborne. Yeah, well, you play Bloodborne. It's like that. Maybe it's a Midwest thing. Um, but And the DLC inv- uh, introduces some of the greatest f- boss fights and characters. And the areas in this game are so interesting. And the way they're all woven together is so cool. And just the experience, like, Bloodstar Beast is here on the screen right now. And Bloodstar Beast, when you first come into this game and fight Bloodstar Beast, for most of us, it's so hard and nearly impossible now I think like several of us could probably beat it without getting hit just because we've learned and like we've upgraded maybe not without getting hit but without dying possibly and like that's the beauty of Bloodborne is is you level up kind of as, <laughs> as a human being um, not just in in your gameplay but in as you know philosophically as well um, and I just I love we don't get a lot of good kind of Lovecraftian gothic horror games and I think Bloodborne just nails it so hard especially because kind of what you think you're getting into 
a classic staple of Lovecraftian horror, cosmic horror, is like, what you think you're getting into at first blush is not really totally what's happening under underneath, um, you know, all the crazy, you know, surface level stuff. Honestly, like, uh, I'm just transfixed by this game, and I think that it's one of my favorite games of all time, probably tied with Symphony of the Night, maybe, up there, and Mist is in there too, but I, I don't know if, I've, I've never played a game that plays like this, that feels as good as this, that looks as interesting and strange and is daring and unafraid like Bloodborne is. Um, yeah. And you can wear the Mikolash hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember where this ends. Oh, nope, still got some more. Werewolves. <laughs> you got the werewolves. <laughs> I was watching, uh, during Awesome Games Done Quick, I was watching a speedrun of this game. And it's something I love about this game is that any level of play, I think, like, once this game clicks for you, you can enjoy it in your own way. Uh, you can you can you can become such a pro at it that you can speed run it on a, on a stream for charity or whatever and and just crush it or you can die hundreds of times and just kind of struggle through it but if it's if it's clicked for you and you know I understand that it doesn't click for everyone and that's okay but like you can still just go through it the first time I played this game I was stuck in uh, the first area of Yarnum for I don't know like five hours it was crazy I was just there forever but I never didn't enjoy it. <laughs> right. Now uh, we need a timer. Hang on. Ian. Hello. Okay. Ian, you always talk about uh, how the Soul series is your favorite type of storytelling. Yar. Uh, instead of something like, uh, like Uncharted or something that's more linear. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about one of your favorite characters in Bloodborne. Uh, Eileen the Crow is very interesting to me. She's on a quest. She's got a mission. Um, and what I like about her is that she's a loner. She doesn't want to accept your help. Um, but if you keep showing up and doing the right things, which isn't immediately obvious either how you progress with her, which is which I like because it gives you more to discover in subsequent playthroughs and things, uh, at the end she she kind of accepts your help. And it's a really, I don't want to spoil what happens, but it's a really cool um, scene. And it leads to a really hard part of that game. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Eileen the Crow is probably my favorite. Um, the doll and German are pretty interesting too. And um, just, I don't know, the, the, the backstory of the Healing Church and all those guys, like Lawrence and all those guys, is really cool. That's more like lore though, because they're not alive still, so it's not really a character, but... Lore-wise, I think it's just so neat. Nice. Uh, Ian, thinking back to my, my time with Bloodborne, uh, especially early on, something that I thought was a little weird was uh, using the bell for multiplayer. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I would just ring it, and I would get somebody right away. Sometimes I'd ring it, and I wouldn't get anyone. And it, th that vagueness would be frustrating sometimes. Yeah. Or at least uh, with Dark Souls, mm -hmm. you can see the names on the ground. Uh, you know who specifically you're trying to get. Uh, was that ever an annoyance for you? Um, yeah, and and um, the interesting thing, like, Bloodborne has received, over the years, a great amount of support through patches, and I think that's one of the things they really addressed um, in a really great way, because they saw that people weren't having a great time with the bell system, and they made it work a little better with password uh, link-ups and, like, level scaling and things like that. So now, like... I could I could be on my like you know new game plus 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 character or whatever and come in and help someone on their first playthrough and it would scale me a little bit. I mean obviously it would still <laughs> I would be a, a big help to them, but like I wouldn't come in at like level 8 million, you know. Um so I think uh, yes, it was a little obtuse at first, but they've definitely addressed it and fixed it and made it way better. Um multiplayer now is way better than it was when the game came out. Do you think Chalice Dungeons are just a cheap way to make the game longer? I don't think that that's why they put those in there. I've heard that argument before. I think that um, the Chalice Dungeons are an interesting kind of way to uh, 
have people who want to experience new kinds of things in the game be able to for longer. But I don't think that they were. I don't think they had any concern that their game was too short. Like I don't think that that was a a, a worry that they had. Plus, um, the the funny thing with Chalice Dungeons is at first blush they seem like just this addendum, this extra thing that you don't need to do. But really, if you want the full story of the game, you do have to go down uh, and fight Yarnum and get down in there. And it's some of the hardest stuff in the game. And uh, and then you, you get the platinum for doing that, too. And so I think it's rewarding and gives you a, a bigger understanding of the, the story of the game. Because the Thumerians uh, discovered the old blood and all that stuff in the, the Chalice Dungeon. So it is, it's, it's in the lore, too. So it's not just some kind of like fun um. game thing. So, even though there are quite a few different weapons, uh, do you think the focus on an aggressive playstyle kind of reduces the variety of ways that you can play compared to, like, say, Dark Souls or Monster Hunter with their different weapons? I think it's definitely, uh, like, they made a choice, right? And uh, it's, for me, it was a great choice because Bloodborne is the way I was trying to play dark souls right i like i wanted to play it all fast and crazy and loosey-goosey um but yeah like blocking's not an option in this so it's definitely like limiting in that way but 40 seconds the blades of mercy play way differently than the kirk hammer right and the tenitris plays pretty differently from the threaded cane and three points riding on this question how many kills have you got with the kirk hammer Probably like four. <laughs> okay. Um, more Ian, than zero. Yeah. I've tried them all. I just I prefer the Blades of, of Mercy. Ian, how do you feel about a lot of the Chalice Dungeons being super repetitive and really boring layouts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that some of them are, but when you drill down into the crazier ones, it gets more interesting. And the the more repetitive ones, I think, are the more optional ones. Sorry, I'm just, I don't have time. But mm. like, okay. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Everyone look away from okay, the screen. Close your eyes, everybody. It's Kingdom Hearts 3. It's Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm ready. Close your eyes, baby. I wish Brad could bring Dude, that would be such a baller move. It's pretty incredible. Not even out yet. You premiere your review. Yeah. You specifically kept it like he somehow whittles it down to five minutes. Yeah, how did he do that? Easy five, like three chips. I'd give you my three. Blood's no main review was longer than five minutes. <laughs> I would give you all six. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, are you ready? Are you ready, Damiani? Yep. I'll give you, you the. I'll let you know when to go. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. So the scheme I'm bringing in is a little newer, a little newer game, and I'm gonna be talking about spoilers probably in it. So once I say the name, you might want to get out if you haven't played this game. Oh my. This new game, newer game, I would say, kind of took our office by storm in a lot of ways. And that game is Damiani Hit It. <laughs> God of War! Oh, no. 2018, oh. baby. Taking a long running PlayStation franchise and rebooting it, I would say, completely changing the game from what it was. Kratos used to be this really angry character that a lot of people couldn't relate to, like Bloodworth in our office. But they re or reapproached Kratos, made him dad Kratos again. He's been a father before, but he made this relationship with his son really personal, and even won everyone over. I'd seen this office. Even Bloodworth was impressed with Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> even Bloodworth. Uh, the combat, super visceral, super intense, like God of War has, but it's done in a third person, uh, over the shoulder kind of Resident Evil. And I would say they pulled this off really great. The amount of combos you can throw in, the how many things you could change, like using your Leviathan Axe and switch into your shield or something like that is all really fluid and feels great. I know Huber loves the charged R2. <laughs> we all do. Uh, really great characters you meet throughout this game, like Mimir, who is a headless or a bodiless head who talks to you, tells you stories of the past. Kratos dealing with these gods coming in and everything like that. Uh, great world to explore that kind of opens, starts very linear, I would say, then opens up to a huge area where you can do side quests, exploring, talking to NPCs, there's tons of armor to upgrade now. You can get, uh, change your gear, get legendary gear, there's some sweet optional tough bosses to fight in this game also if you're wanting to, like the Valkyries. Um, it's just, 
I want to talk about, uh, before I run out of this, I just want to get this out of the way. I want to just, a little quote from Michael Huber's review. Oh, no. <laughs> quote. <laughs> quote. God of War doesn't just feel like the next step for the franchise, but for the entire video game industry. <laughs> Phenomenal visuals, rewarding exploration, and deep, nuanced combat systems contribute to an epic adventure that should be experienced by every human on Earth. <laughs> hardball, dude. Every single human <laughs> being on Earth. And um, I think this is a great game. It delivers the whole way through. It never stops. The story it tells is emotional. It's powerful. The gameplay is great. And I just love this game. But I have one question if I'm allowed to ask. Brandon. Yes. What won our game of the year last year? Oh, oh. Last year, so that, that we gave it this year, but you mean the 2018? Yeah, but the 2018 game. God of War. Oh, right, that's right. God of War won our game of the year. I want you all to remember that when you're voting tonight. That God of War won our game of the year. It's a great game. I highly recommend it. It's a game you can play, appreciate if you're a long-running fan of the series, or if you're someone who's brand new who's never played it, you will hop in, you will have a great time, and it's in a journey that will stay with you the whole way. You'll be happy you did it. And that's it. Well played. 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 Okay. Well, yeah, all right, I have a question. Yeah, sure, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ready to go. Uh, just ready to start. <laughs> we ready to timer? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have a criticism I, I don't think I've ever actually brought up to any ally, but it's Ooh. something that really stuck with me through God of War, and that's the idea that, like, no one else, no one lives in this world. Like, there's nobody there. Like, there's no there's no kingdom to pass on to Atreus. Like, it's great that Atreus is learning these skills, but, like, he has no friends. You know, like, there's no one... Well, there's only, like... They live... There's only... There's, I like, the cast of God mm -hmm. War is great. There's, like, eight people, and that's mm -hmm. it. So, like, while it is a huge game, I, I couldn't help but feel when I was done with it, I'm like, this world just seems like a graveyard. And so it's a weird thing to, like, fight for, in my opinion. That was one of my negative okay. takes. He lives in seclusion. Right? Yeah, he lives in seclusion on purpose. Takes place in ancient land. And I think that's a strength, Jones, actually, to the game that there's not a lot of characters. When I think about a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where there's 10 million characters, I just forget them all immediately. I don't care about them. But this game gives you the time to get to know these characters, like Frey, who lives out in the woods. He's dealing with this trouble past something that happened in Balder and his relationship with his mother. And just the journey with... Um, and Trace and Kratos, like how the game starts and how it ends, the relationship is a completely different story. So I think it plays to the strengths of the game because it gives the, ti uh, the characters time to grow for us to actually get to know them a lot and see them change throughout the adventure. Okay, uh, Brad. <laughs> yes. Spoilers. Uh, so, how did you feel when you get this chance to go to these other mm -hmm. dimensions? Yeah. And then some of these dimensions are just. A volcano. Mm -hmm. A maze. Um, I'm cool with it, Blood Earth, because it is like a, a little tease of what's to come. And I think they add something different in each scenario to change up the game that's not like something else in the rest of the game. The Fire Realm, I remember, is like the combat trials that really, like, really makes you uh, really study up on your combat. And the next one is the maze one that changes up the gameplay. Well, I do agree with you. It's not like as huge as the next or like the main hubs you're in. I think it's a nice little tease of where the game is going to go. Because I think the game doesn't need to give you a lot more because there's so much more focused in the main realm you're in. And, has, and the elf realm you go and you explore that way more than those other two realms. So I think it, it gives you a little taste of those two, but it goes pretty far in, in the elf realm. Would you say the Misty Maze realm is the Chalice Dungeon? The Chalice Dungeon? Yeah, just like a, yeah, a randomized just yeah. filler area. Yeah. Eh, there's some stuff in there, but I would say if you're comparing it to, I guess you could kind of say it's the Chalice Dungeon-esque area, it certainly doesn't go on as long. Mm. It doesn't <laughs> wear out its welcome, I would say. Where I'm like, oh man, I gotta go to another floor again? <laughs> hey now. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fight for my game. Tell me about those sick Valkyrie fights. Uh, really great, Huber. <laughs> really push you to the test. Especially the last one, Huber. The last one was so hard, though. Especially, uh, I mean, that's great. I think yeah. it's great having optional bosses that really make you st uh, use everything that you've learned throughout this game. Really, really fights back at you. So I think they're great, man. Uh... <laughs> Hmm. hmm. Atreus 
He's kind of a little dweeb in that middle part. Right. He's uh, supposed to be a dweeb. Yeah. He's, he's supposed to be unlikable. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I think if like you thinking about that, Ian, I think they did their job really well in actually making you you're right. annoyed with him at that part. You're Do right. you think that this game had uh, enough epic set pieces to fit the series for for me yeah i think the game definitely scales back but i think at a point especially with uh ascension it just kind of got out of control and those moments didn't feel that special anymore this game dialed it back to a lot more smaller encounters but when there was the huge encounters with like the dragon and with the fight with balder it was out of control insane because it didn't happen all the time uh is it is it a detriment that it basically feels like act one no, like, it's I don't think so. A prologue. No, I don't think it's. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't think. I don't think it's a prologue either. I think it gives you enough story to leave you satisfied and wanting more. It's supposed to want you ha or wanting more. It doesn't need to be start and finish for it to be a good game or anything like that. It is part one of a obviously a trilogy, but I think what it does, it gets you engaged enough to want to see what happens next. Do you think the parrying and dodging is too? strong a lot of the fights later on um oh, I see what you mean. a lot of the a lot of the fights later on like par you, you just parry everyone parry 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 right i you mean that's something it. you have to work at though to get it right it's a rewarding tool like i wouldn't say it's unfair in bloodborne if you're good at dodging time thank you thank you uh, and nice. brandon yeah. jones is the last yeah take the middle jones you yeah, got another yellow card there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was a legit question. The last one. No, was... the first one was not a legit question. So but he then he went into the, the oh, well, combat. Oh, you said has it Tell us about the sick belt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's been yellow cards Fair in enough. every single person's presentation. Fair enough. Fair enough. You've been warned. Ready to go, John. All right. Uh, so this is a dangerous thing to say before I talk about a game for Hall of Greats. Whoa. Uh, because when we talk about tens, we talk about five stars. We talk about the, zero. We talk about the greats. We talk about those 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 really incredible, uh, near perfect uh, games. You know, we, we we don't want to consider a ten to be a perfect game. I I'm not going to make the argument that I expect everyone to consider this a perfect game. I I try real hard to critique this game, and the reason why I'm excited to bring it to Hall of Greats is because I think a lot of other games that I've brought do have a lot of flaws. I think this game is near flawless. Uh, and that game is Portal, the original Portal. <gasps> uh, Portal is was in an era where we started to see this emergence of Journey, Unfinished Swan, moving on to Inside Vein. Like a lot of games have kind of taken what. We first started to see done in the in this in this this span of time last gen when these games were being created, that proved that all you need is three hours to really make something that you don't get a sense of like, man, I could have done that for another three, or the this experience was really lacking because it wasn't uh, it, it didn't go on for as long as I expect these other games to go. So I think it's one of the three crowning achievements from this game is its length and what it does in that span of time, the way. It's built up by rooms that seems like a very archaic, obvious way to set up a, a puzzle game or a really any game, any shooter to be like, here's literally the first area and now the second and now the third. But I think it, it builds up in a really clever way. It introduces you to new elements of how you have to move past these puzzles, but lets you kind of just organically looking at the environment, discover the way you know, of what the game is intending you to do. And obviously, as I'll get into the second uh, best thing about this game, uh, the story very much depends on it being kind of formulaic and not giving you a lot of information about why you're put in here. Even when you finish the game, you don't necessarily have a ton of context as far as like why you specifically were put in this situation, what is going to happen to these, these characters in this story moving forward. Um, but moving on to number two, this, this story is really incredible. Considering how much time has passed since we had this first portal, I I can't think of a game that surprises you in the way that this game does, that is not a part of a cutscene. It's not a part of, it, it's something you could potentially fail at achieving and think you maybe have done something wrong and move away from the game. I don't expect a lot of players to do that now because I think a lot of players know about GLaDOS. They know about uh, how this game ends, but this is a game that completely changes its story 
almost entirely visually, you know, like almost just you, you have to notice that something's wrong. You have to look up at the kind of like, like, you know, uh, a faded glass of all of these windows and realize those chairs are empty. You know, you have to kind of, you know, see the, you know, listen to these really subtle developing glitches in GLaDOS's voice and just her, her general attitude throughout the entire thing that it's not only just in the writing, but again, like how specifically long this game is, they just do the absolute perfect amount of like the arc of you recognizing, oh, this voice is funny, it's guiding me through this. Oh, it's it's broken because, you know, this is Val, this is the Half-Life universe, and so uh, this is the type of humor that they normally bring to these things. And then by the time you get to the end, wait, no, this is a malevolent force. This is something that I'm not gonna have to beat these trials. I'm gonna have to actually beat this robot. I'm going to have to fight for my life to try to get out of here that this is not only someone that I'm now realizing is a villain, but now I'm realizing I am more powerful than this person. Person, and I actually threw, it's kind of like that classic story of good and evil. You have a villain that gives the hero powers to serve their own purposes, but then it backfires against them. Uh, and they, they realize that uh, they, they now have, have created their own adversary. Uh, and I, I just, I've talked about this game for four minutes and hopefully illustrated a lot of the strengths of it, completely not mentioning to this point that it introduces one of the most fun things you can do in video games, talking about web-slinging Huber. Like, <laughs> like, you take the story out of it, you take the levels out of it, you take the graphics, which I, I still think hold up because of specifically how, the, how bland the game's design uh, seems to be and then evolves and gets crazy as you break past the walls and really see the guts of how this, uh, this area works. But beyond that, just putting a portal on the floor and on the ground and falling through that is fun. Uh, experimenting with with weight and solving puzzles in ways that actually the developers did not attend, but still left in the game because they were like, the early testers were geniuses for coming up with that. Who are we to tell them that the game shouldn't be played that way? So to have a game that is just, in my opinion, an absolutely perfect length with a really surprising story that holds up so many years later and one of the most fun implements I've ever used, not only in a puzzle game or a first person game, but just games in general. Hi. I got a question. You ready? Yes. Oh. Uh, what made you pick Portal 1 over Portal 2, Jones? I mean, Portal 2's got the co-op. Yeah, I think Portal... Uh, Portal 1, in my opinion, is the better game because I think it's a better blend. I think in Portal 2... Uh, I actually think of Portal 2 more as kind of like a like a Douglas Adams Hitchhiker's Guide wacky... Like, they, they realized people love the story so much. We surprised them so much with the story. Let's focus a lot on the writing. And the comedy was so in your face. And I just <laughs> love... I wasn't, like, intimidated by Portal 2. And I was terrified the first time I played Portal. I was like, what is going on? Like, when you first see the squirt... Like, the, the people writing on the walls and, like how you really had to, in a Bloodborne sense, how you had to kind of understand what what happened to this facility. Because usually when you play, you know, something like, you know, Resident Evil or like, you know, post-apocalyptic stuff, it's very obvious things have gone wrong in this environment. And it's not so obvious here. Uh, it's, it's very clinical in a sense almost that like everything looks okay until you start to peel back those layers. And I think Portal 2 is just a different vibe. Uh, also, you know, Mr. Daniel Bloodworth brought Portal 2, so I didn't want to, uh, I want to talk about my personal favorite <laughs> from the Portal series. Uh, Portal, you, you, you're Portal 1? Yeah, I think we're Portal 2. Oh, all right. I stand corrected. I didn't um, Portal 1 and it didn't win. Uh, I just think, I, I think Portal 2 does a lot of things that the first game didn't do, but as far as a, just an oh, even man. blend of all of the elements, I think has a better balance. Blood, er, uh, sorry. Jones. Yes. Uh, this game can feel like homework, man. Like, sometimes I like to have some, some fun when I play games, but if, like... Now that I know how to solve a lot of the puzzles, there's no real incentive to go back because it's just going through the motions of like, okay, I know these puzzles, cool, I know the twist, I know GLaDOS. And then on the other side, if I don't know how to solve the puzzles, like it's, it can be extremely frustrating. I remember getting stuck on one of them and looking at least one or two of these up. Um, to do quote you, that's on you. That's on me, yeah. Right. <laughs> Did you, do you have a, a counter... Argument sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I think that's where, where length comes into it. The, the To me, the satisfaction of going back in, even though I know all the bosses and all the rooms in Symphony of the Night, it's fun to take that knowledge and then master that game to, to speed run it as, as best as I can. And I think that's why this kind of three, four hour span of Portal is so brilliant, because even going back through and going through the motions, even just setting, you know, seeing the little balls go through one hole and pop out another is just so visually satisfying. You know, seeing those angles of looking in, looking at yourself, 
uh, you know, seeing the world, you know, come together, uh, I think is just short enough and just long enough. Uh, and I, I, I think the puzzles are really brilliant because in a lot of games, like adventure games, it's like, did I grab the wrong item? I, you know, was there something visually in the environment that I missed that I didn't see? And I think the cues of like when they bring in the brown walls, you cannot attach portals to this. I think that stuff is so straightforward that even though you can't figure out specifically what momentum or maybe a spot in the environment you didn't realize you could get to, there's just not a lot of confusing elements that could throw you off in the environment. There's not a lot of uselessness going on in the design. Like it's all set up very straightforward to guide you directly toward what you need to do. Jones, I want to talk about the last boss. And I like a puzzle game having one or two real like crazy head scratchers. Like parts you're like, man, I really got Jones, you know, I want to talk about that. the final boss. Okay. Uh it's not a head scratcher. It's not creative. You're just moving missiles back to the 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 GLaDOS. Do you like that final boss? Do you think it's the greatest way to end this puzzle game? I, I do. I think it's tough to compare GLaDOS in that game to your typical final boss because the game is so not typical compared to a lot of other action games. And so if I was just to take the boss out of that game and compare it to a lot of like the end of like a Doom or something like or a Wolfenstein, like, yeah, it's not as exhilarating. It's not as clever or, or explosive. But I think just the idea of using those skills you develop throughout that game that maybe playing Portal 2 and other, oh, yeah. you know, mods later on, you know, might not seem that exciting. But like if you just take that game as it is, I think it's really fun for you to realize in that moment, not only do I have the power to destroy you, but I don't have to just place something specifically in a spot. I can kind of be creative about like where I want to hit you, you know, from these directions or or or, or the, the actual physicality of having to like put yourself in danger and then move out of the way to use this tool that GLaDOS gave you to turn the tides on her. I think it's just really satisfying. Um, but like any game, you play, the eighth time you play it, you are going through the motions a little bit. Um, but I, I think that's the fault of GLaDOS. I think that's like her pride is is not realizing like, damn, all I have are these missiles. That's the only thing I have mm -hmm. to stop this person. I didn't think they were going to get this far. I really thought I was going to burn them in a furnace. And I was I was not prepared. And I think you can sense that frustration and that failure in GLaDOS' voice. And the fear. Four seconds. <laughs> Time. Oh, great. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, cool. Woo, good games tonight, man. Wow. Yeah, uh, that escalated. That yeah. escalated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Second half. I could have sworn you brought Portal 2. Wow, crazy. Um, yeah, so, let's change. Uh, let's change. Just change the, it will preview because we're using the web printer now, right? Yeah. Portal? So yeah, just change that to one and it should be good. Oh, well, they brought it. I thought you were already. Portal! Portal! Oh yeah, we should explain quickly yeah. what's about to happen. Kyle? Go, go over the things again. Yeah, we're going to each take our turns now uh, voting on what we think belongs in the Hall of Greats. We have three votes. One worth three points, one worth two points, one worth one point. Obviously, we're going to give our three points to the game we think deserves the most. Uh, we're going to take turns explaining quickly uh, the choices that we're making. Basically, one sentence per option. Uh, and then um, uh, at the end, Damiani will tally those chips. I should tell you. Chat will be turned off. Chat will be turned off. We will not be able to read you uh, because you will you will know what's in the Hall of Greats before we do if you're paying attention. Um, I should warn you that there are chips in, in the cups already just so that we don't know if we're the first or, or third or fourth. Uh, Is there dip? There's no dip. Oh. No ranch. <sighs> No ranch. Uh, <laughs> Italian order. You got any ranch? We always go in reverse order to show. Like, I think you nailed it last time, Don. Yeah, there. until we get to the top three. Yeah. And then we reveal the best and the highest amount of votes first. And yeah. then the last reveal is the, the between second and third place because that's where the most tension is. Yeah, you did great with that last time. Yeah, so we'll do it that way as usual. ET yeah, so, ET uh, guys, when you're sitting in the chair normally is when we can see your head. If you're leaning forward too far, you'll be cut off. And you'll be out of the mic. So, Good yeah. to know. I like to lean. Don't yeah. lean. Me too. Don't I'm lean. a leaner. Lean, lean, lean back. Just scrunch a little. <laughs> Fat Joe style. Fat Joe. Do the rock away. Uh, because this is the last night in the garage, the rest of us will go out in the cold. Yeah! <laughs> yes! Oh, a chilly, yeah. chilly yeah. final yeah. night. Freezing <laughs> <laughs> cold. Oh, you can lean forward a little. Just don't do it the whole time. 
Um, and yeah, there's chips. There's six chips are right there. There's some dupes. I'm so hungry. I thought you meant like uh, potato uh, chips. Uh, <laughs> are you eating chips outside? Do you want jalapeno Pringles? Oh, they're right here, Damian. No, I got jalapeno chips, but not jalapeno Pringles. Really? Uh, who went first? No, no, just you just grab first. them when oh, okay. you're here. Good luck, you were. Oh, okay. oh, I go first now. Yeah, because you went first. Oh, okay. Over. High stakes. All right, so high stakes. Is the shotgun? Yeah, you can check it real quick. Did you say shotgun? What? Um, so don't move wait, the where are the chips again? They're right there. They're right in, the, in front. Okay. Thank you. Okay, looks good. Godspeed, UV. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, chat. Love you, chat. Love you, love you. Um, so we're going to go in reverse order. One, two, three. I've just got to look everything over again. One last time. Um, I'm not voting it for Deus Ex because things escalated and this this is these are not shots this is not a slight uh Bloodworth just didn't sell it so I'm sorry Deus Ex but one vote is going to go to Trials Fusion because Don sold that you know what one to Bloodborne cuz Bloodborne is amazing two to Trials Fusion because of Don's passion. Two to Trials Fusion. And uh, three to God of War. Because it's one of the greatest games ever made and Easy Allies Game of the Year. And uh, yeah. Next. Next up. Hey everybody, I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick. They're covered in barbecue sauce. How y'all doing? Hope you're having a fine Tuesday. I guess you could say I'm sort of a barbecue monster. Okay, uh... Uh, to be honest with you, I've not decided yet. I've, uh, I, I did, like, uh, sometimes when I go to a restaurant, I like to not even know until I walk in because that usually makes a decision the easiest. Um, this will be easy. So what I'll do is no matter what, I'll put one chip into three. So let's do that right now. Portal gives one. Uh, Jones is right. Yeah, I mean, he made a great argument about it. Um, it's not perfect, but it is, it is unique in its excellence um okay i mean let's just go with let's go with that so i'm going with bloodborne i'm going god of war um <sighs> bloodborne is my three bloodborne is very very good uh, bloodborne is far from perfect you know there's some places you can go in old yarnum where it's just like i'm clipping through walls right it's like they did not f finally tune this right they didn't come over this game uh but it's just it's it is excellent in so many ways it it is a game that like took me over right and it's like not the kind of i like hate scary stuff i don't like play like bloody hard games and just like i was into it man i am into it from aesthetic yeah you know what yeah you got the three and then my two is going to portal god of war you're a little new you're getting the one but um hey like obviously we all love god of war deserves that vote okay see you. <laughs> uh, I just heard Kyle talking about barbecue sauce. All right. Oh, I'm hitting things. I don't fit in the space. Hello, chat. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, one. Cool. Uh, I'm not supposed to lean, but I can't see them. Okay. So, my number three vote is going to go to Portal. Uh, because I brought it before, of course. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I, I clearly, I believe that this belief belongs in uh, the Holy Grace. And I, I agree with a lot of what 
uh, Brandon was saying about the, the creativity of the game, about how good it feels to play even now. Uh, one thing he didn't bring up, I was holding my tongue with uh, for Huber, is uh, uh, a lot of people don't talk about there's like uh, sort of like a challenge, set of challenges you can do for a lot of those, uh, those rooms uh, to really um, test your skills and like try to think about things in new ways. Uh, second, uh, Zelda Link's Awakening, uh, which uh, that's, man, I'm talking really weird. Yeah, that's one of the first games I streamed here. It's one of my favorite Zelda games, one of the first games that made me kind of feel emotions uh, while playing through it. Um, really, really great all around. Um, some really fun stuff in that game. And then the last chip I'll give to Bloodborne because what the heck, this is going to get in there eventually. So it's just a matter of time. Oh, I didn't know what you meant by cards. <laughs> There's so many different kinds of cards. Where are they? Hang on, don't, don't start, know. Ben. Okay. We can't remember the order. Down. It doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, bye. All right, bye. I'm going to wait so you don't hear. Uh, this is very difficult. I, I'm not confident in this, but I think Bloodborne deserves to be in. Uh, it has one of my favorite game worlds, so that gets my three. Uh, Link's Awakening DX might be the best Game Boy game. I, th I think that game does almost everything right. Last one. I wish there were more games like Portal. The world needs more Portal. Thank you. Wow, that was quick. Here are the chips. Wait. There are just chips out here. Well, I'm taking mine from the bag. Wait, are there any chips in here? Was I deceived? I think there was full. Yo, guys, there's no chips in here. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we're good. All right. Where do I start? Where are them? Okay. So, I'll go in reverse order. The for th getting my one ship. Hmm. It's really tough. It's really tough. It's really tough. It's between. It's between Bloodborne, between Bloodborne, and it is between Portal for my one chip. Jones made a good argument. Ian was passionate, but obviously a little less prepared. But like, I'd rather play Bloodborne than Portal. But I like also love Portal. Portal gives me headaches when I play too much. That's not a joke, but I love it. Damn, they're so good. I feel like, you know what? I feel like, I feel like Portal will have its day at some point. But Bloodborne has come too much. Oh, that's a terrible argument. You know what? I will not reward. I will reward the stronger argument. I will stick to my, to my guns. I said I was going to reward the better arguments. So, where are you, Portal? Portal gets one chip. Second place. My two chips, they're going to Pikmin, Ben Moore. Another good argument from Ben there. Those uh, magical bullet points works wonders with those. And in my uh, my three chips, to the best argument of the night. Where is it? That's the right one, right? That says Trials Fusion. Dawn, Trials Fusion, baby. Best argument. Loved it. And uh, those are my votes.
Hello, good evening. All right, everybody. Well, what can I say? Garage has been fun. We're going to miss it. But we're on to bigger and better things. Thanks to all of you. So thank you. My votes are going to be spread out in the following way. Kyle's presentation was awesome. It was very honest and effective. I loved it. And it's a good game. So my three votes will go to Link's Awakening. My two votes will go to God of War. Brad Thunderbuck, Game of the Year. Remarkable in many ways. Don't have to uh, dwell on it. And what can I say? Portal, yeah. Uh, Portal I probably would have voted on it honestly higher for, except for the fact that the it does have the replayability thing. I think Huber, it was really true. It's not the kind of game you can play a million times and still have fun once you figured everything out. But it's still a really great game. Very well said by Joe. My last point goes there. See you later. All right, let's see here. Where are my chips? Okay. At first I was sitting easy this time because I was like, okay. I wasn't too worried, but now I'm worried. Okay, uh, I think all mine are in front row here. Portal gets three from me. Ba, ba. God of War gets two. Ba, ba. And Trials Fusion. It was going to be Zelda because his presentation was incredible. I've never played that game, but he convinced me. But then games I already love came into the mix, so Trials Fusion gets my number one. Those are my votes. Hey, chat. What up? All right, here we go. Given three points to Bloodborne, like, I think this is the fourth time we've brought this game. Come on, man. Just get it in there. Make it right. Two. Two, 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 two. This is... Mm, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with The Last of Us. Really love that game. Super awesome. Now, three, three is for sure the hardest for me. Because for me, it's a pick between Portal and Link's Awakening. I think I'm going to go Link's Awakening, actually. I think Portal 2 is better than Portal 1. And I think uh, Link's Awakening is a, f a very good Zelda game. So, that's it. Yeah! All right. Damn. Damn, there's some good games. Damn, damn. Damn, damn. All right, what do we got here, everybody? Hold on. Let me just, let me just, I, I think I know. Let me just start over. Oh, man, Pikmin. Pikmin. I love you so much, Pikmin. I just want you to know. I want everybody to know. I want the world to know that this... Mm, mm, Mwah. but this is games are too good they're too good um uh bloodborne you would win but you don't have lip sync you know who does have lip sync that god of war that came out this year that's a good game that's a uh pretty phenomenal congratulations new entry into the ecl it's all great but bloodborne um it's a uh, bloodborne and last of us last of us bloodborne um i think i think at the end of the day um I just recently played Last of Us 2 because I played the remastered uh, and it and it really holds up. But um, uh, there's just something so I think I like really enjoyed like when I play games like Resident Evil or Last of Us, I really settle into it. And despite it being terrifying and emotional, uh, I, it is kind of like a warm blanket because I just love those types of systems where I think I felt like I had electricity flowing through my body the whole time I played Bloodborne. So I will put Bloodborne just slightly ahead of Last of Us. So two for Bloodborne. And one for Last of Us. But you Pikmin. All right. 
All right. We're back. We're back. Yeah, we're back. We're back. We're back. Oh, yeah. I got some trivia. I got some trivia. 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 What am I saying, dude? Trivia. Falsetto. I don't think Blood always joins in on our weird songs, but he, like, committed to that one. When he does, he does. All right, uh, so last week for Love and Respect on the podcast, somebody submitted uh, trivia of Hall of Greats, and I thought, why not just do it right now while Damiani's counting? All right. Uh, yeah, I was like, Damiani, yeah. uh, while Damiani's counting. So this comes from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this comes to us from Run Fire. Must be nice. Here we go. Um, <laughs> Most nice, Kyle. Do you want to? I will swap with you, dude. I'll count. Uh, Bean counter. How many games are in the Hall of Greats? Oh, how many? Fourteen. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, really? Don, yes. First come, first serve. Did you just pull out of the air? Don, I did math. He knew it, this was the eighth. That was some fast math. Really, yeah. I had got there, but yeah. like, not. I did not know this was the eighth. Wow. All right, now we get nasty. Okay, oh. so we know 14 games are in. Which colored shit? White. White. White is poison. Don't count okay. white. And there were no white <laughs> chips in the bag? How come there's a stack of chips left? There should not be a stack of I chips left. No, I didn't use a stack of chips. No, there's there a was, stack of chips left. Did somebody like, not vote? Did just do it? Hubert, did you not vote? We no. got another dirty hell All we need to do is find out who so you pulled chips. So you pulled chips from the bag? Mm -hmm. You okay. said they're in the bag. I did not, but okay, yes, it's fine. Like, we'll they're right good. there. It's all good, though. Right. It's, it's, fun. it's fine. Because I, right, right. I took all the whites out of the bag. Okay. Okay. All okay. right, so we know we have 14 games in the Hall of Greats. <laughs> right. How many have a version playable on a Nintendo console or handheld? 12. 12. Yeah. 13. Oh. <laughs> all of them except for Symphony of the Night. Wow. Woo! Wow. 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 I win. Why is it on wait, Switch? Wait, Metal Gear Solid? That's, yeah, that doesn't count. That does not count. Twelve, no, 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 no. Yeah, twelve, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we won't count we did that. It. Uh, how many were originally released on a Nintendo console or handheld? Ten, mm -hmm. eight, eight. Nine. Uh, all of them, but Symphony and Night, <laughs> Tetris, Street Fighter, and Metal Gear Solid. So ten. So well, was ten. Tetris originally ten. released? Yeah. yeah, you know what? Uh, give us Tetris. Like, wait, no, because it was in the arcades PC and stuff too. Like I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what came out first exactly. So there's ten, ten Gang Tetris Two. I don't know what whether that came out before the Nintendo. Oh, the whole one. The whole drama there. Uh, so uh, ten out of fourteen originally released on Nintendo console or handheld. Uh, <laughs> which, had a good run. Which great received the highest percentage of possible votes? Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger. Yeah, you, you nailed it right off. Yeah. It had seventy eight percent. That's right. Seventy eight percent. Second was Metroid Prime with seventy. Ooh, wow! That, that game cleaned up. Yeah. That's one of the greats. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, then it was Good Legend of Zelda. What are talking about? Uh, Ocarina of Time had fifty nine, and Metal Gear Solid had fifty six. Okay. Metal Gear should have had hundred. Uh, Pokemon Red and Blue became a great the same week as Chrono Trigger, with the fewest votes of any other great. <laughs> <laughs> Mathematically speaking, even spread. What is the fewest number of votes a game could possibly receive in? Still be inducted as a great. Oh, Ooh. it would have to be Gone six. <laughs> I'm gonna give it. To, it's five. Okay. Okay. Not close. close. It's really close. Yeah, dude. So yeah, if we say, spread it out eight. that much over the nine games, five Got is it. the least it would take to win. Spread it out. Five was spread my highest out. vote loss. Spread it out. Spread Wait, what? It out. Yeah, five was the most votes I got, but didn't win. Mm. Have you gotten a game in? Well, yeah, uh, out of well, six last six. time. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, which ally averages the most <coughs> votes received per submission? Ben? Hubert? Brad. Brad. Ben, Brad, or Hubert? It's Damiani yeah. with 9, what? and then Brad with 8.71. <laughs> what? <laughs> you get a, hey, man, you get a lot of points. Uh, Blood is... No, Ben is next with 6.5, and then Blood is fourth with 6.14. And the list stops there. Uh, That's it. <laughs> yeah, do you want to know where it goes after that? Yeah. Uh, Ian, your your average is 5.57. Well, well, well. Uh, my average is 5.43. Jones, yours is 5.4, 4. 4.29. Yep. Uh, Hubert's yours is 3.71. Wow. Wow, really? And Don... I'm bring Nintendo. Find a decimal. <laughs> Tell me my decimal. <laughs> Tell me my <laughs> decimal. What is it? Point four. Three point two nine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So wait, that's our average number of votes that we get? I'll bring it Nintendo again next time. Your average points. Total points. Total points, points. Yeah. Total points divided yeah. by a number of episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Mario yeah. 3, three yeah. easy points. Uh, Mario 3, there it easy is. Easy points. <laughs> Lock me in for Mario 3 next time. In fact, yeah, put it in the hall. Yeah. 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 You know what? Fast track it. Fast track it. Fast track it, dog. 
Have any current greats ever been submitted for <laughs> consideration by Michael Huber? No. No. No, I'm winless. Trick question, yes, because oh, oh, Resident you once Evil. submitted Resident Evil Remake. Oh, sure. But there was an alley oop with Ben. Yeah. yeah. Ben alley ooped it. Oh, I don't remember it. Redemption. Yeah. I, I remember was, submitting it. I wasn't here Redemption. when I... That was actually, uh, yeah. That was that's that's why, I remember I pitched okay. in your first stead. One. No, you pitched in my stead for RE4. Right, right. God. And then they both got in. <laughs> Easy. Trick question. Okay. Uh, uh, and there were two alley oops, right? There's Street Fighter for, with blood. Yeah. And, uh... Or I guess I did once in What's an alley oop? Yeah, that's an alley oop. Somebody throws the basketball. We don't know all like an assist. Hey, I guess I did bring a Nintendo game time. Yeah. Remake was GameCube. Yeah. Oh, Damn. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. You are susceptible. Man, yeah. you are susceptible. And it, it's Damn. the only one that got in. Yeah. <laughs> How many games have been slapped with a one year ban? Two. Two. Three. 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 I think Four. Oh, Four. Yes, Nine. Three. Nine! You ready for this? Here we go. <laughs> World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, SimCity 4. Uh huh. Doom from 2016. Uh, wow. wow. Jurassic <laughs> Park Operation Genesis. Wow. Super Mario Maker. Journey. Oh, Super Mario. Skyrim, Journey Man, Dungeons and Dragons, Wait, who brought Skyrim? and Ms. Pac Man. Jones probably. Damian. No, oh. uh, Damiani brought it. Yeah, Damiani brought it, but like trolled it. Oh, he trolled it. He, he brought it. He brought it to, to, it. Brought it to <laughs> get it. You <laughs> buried my Doom one, I remember, because the level editor did. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not clarification. What's up? Um, what do we do in the situation of tiebreakers again? That goes to Patreon. Okay, Patreon's gonna be involved this time. Well, oh, it's, it's, right. oh, wait, for the yeah. winner? It's a tie between second and third. Tie between second and third. Place. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yes. Um, Something's getting spiked. Let's do this. Yeah. 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 Patreon. Last question. Uh, to which great did Game Informer give a score of 6.75? My closing oh. your door. Yes. There's hurt. There's yeah. hurt there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Spite. Not, the a, not, a, not a score mm. I agree with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sweet. You heard it here first, folks. Ben likes that game. Yeah. That was fun. It deserves all of the love. Uh, so is that hard. just Patreon comments or uh, that was love and respect? Or, or, uh, was it? No, no, no. Uh, how how does the voting work? You, you, can, pull. Pull. you, can, you can pull. The poll yeah. no. yeah. is I mean, way better no. than anything else. Got it. Yeah, that was some fun trivia. Yeah, Thanks. Good poll. Yeah, that was, that was, that was very cool trivia. Thank you. Thank you. All Star past games. Very cool. Everything. Yeah. Imagine that. I'll make it a week though. Do we announce it the next week? It's nice for it to be able to end. Okay. So we find out. The we'll we'll the only know one inductee. at the end of the night. Yeah. I'm terrified yeah. right now. Right, so yeah, like, I am. How's the poll being made? Who's making it? I'll do it. Straw poll. It's not no. a straw poll. No. It's got to be Patreon. Too yeah. Patreon It's got to be on Patreon. Wait, we, yeah. so we're, we don't get to find out tonight? No. No. What? We'll know one. We'll oh, know number weird. one. That's no. Yeah. No, no, it needs to be decided here and now. If you're here in chat, it, you get before. to vote. Yes, I have This to ain't agree. right. I, I'm, I <laughs> we vote to change it. It's how we've I'm done it several times. But that doesn't mean we can't change it right now. We can't make them authentic, though. We can't authenticate that they're not just going to spam votes. They could cheat, got dude. You. It's we're cop. It's the only way to cheat. cheat. No, it's no. not. There's it's no way to cheat. It's cop. 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 All right. There's no honor in Hall of Grace. Yeah, we're ready. I think we're ready, Don. All right. Do you have honor? Before we get to the happy news, we have bad news. Yeah, oh, of oh, oh no. Someone's got, someone's we got some bans. We have, a, we have a tie for last place, both receiving no votes, so they will receive the ban. Oh, 11. Rock them up. But I only nominated one game. This <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, God. And those unfortunate games are... Deus Ex. Oh, oh, no. What? Oh, wow. Oh, that no. shocks me. I was going to put one in and but I you were a fraud. It was my fault. You're a fraud. <laughs> a fraud. Yeah, it's a good night. Shots, yeah. fired. shots fired. What? What? Unintentional shots fired. I thought blood didn't sell me enough. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm being honest that here. is not unintentional. That's shots not unintentional fired, at all. It's, 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 I'm being, I'm being that's, honest. That's locked and loaded. That's, that's brutal. Brutal. It's, it's not personal. You're that's a shock. You're just, you're just John Wick blood. You're just John Wick. You can't take the bullets back after the gun's been fired. It's not personal. You tell me to come to Hollow Greats and to be the. I'm doing the residue test. There's gunpowder. I don't think we're gonna make it to the studio. <laughs> Here's the thing. That oh, just, I'm sorry. We just dragged down his average. Oh, his oh, average oh, is going yeah. down. Bring my oh, yeah. God. Blood sorry. will not forget that. <laughs> yeah, blood, I mean, I doubt I sold you guys. Just, did we, no, we don't, we don't even know yet. 
I'm sorry, bro. We're so devastated over that one. All right, what's yeah. next? Blood. And uh, I loved your trivia because uh, there uh, there will be a new person who has the highest average coming in last as well as FTL with zero votes. Oh! oh. Damiani, that was a I'm good sure speech, though. That was a really good speech. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't for me. <clears throat> Dang. Who would have thought? All right, so this, next. Ooh. Oh, do you have something to say? No, I'm just. Uh, we're just flabbergasted. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the ride. We're all shocked. <laughs> I just want Blood to know that I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. He doesn't forgive you. Look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. <laughs> <Look> at his <laughs> eyes. <laughs> something <laughs> died in Blood today. <laughs> Notice Actually, he said this was born after the Resident Evil 2 review. Something didn't die, it was born, but it's vengeance. <laughs> Vengeance was uh, born in blood. All right, spin, I'll spin it. Sorry to keep going. I'll spin gonna... it the other way. The other games I voted for, the arguments were better. It wasn't that blood or the uh, That's all the That's just yeah. another way of saying the same thing. He did it. 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 Yeah, chat, we killed the nominees off the list as they're eliminated, so oh, we just nice. leave the winners. That's why they're vanishing. Um, coming in next uh, with two votes was Pikmin. Oh. Not man, baby. Oh. Not man. Not man. Not man. Not man. That's a victory. Not man. Hammer me, man. <laughs> and then, so, so next up with three votes, The Last of Us. Ooh. Wow. Oh. I think God of War stole the last of us votes. Oh, for oh, sure. I think oh, he yeah. ate those up, Brad. Dude, when he presented yes. it, I was like, oh, wow. No. Oh, man. That's wow, fun. I gave you two, though. All right. And then coming in, I guess this is fifth place with six votes Trials Fusion. Oh, my oh, goodness. That was yeah. a great presentation. Oh, nice. I loved it. Thank you. I loved it. Thank you. Wow. What's it called? Thank Sympathetic? You. Sympathetic uh, nervous system. Sympathetic, sympathetic nervous, nervous system. system. Yeah, man. Engage, vocabulary. engage to the max. I learned. Kyle. All games engage it, but yeah. not to the max. I learned. I learned from your presentation. <laughs> All right. So we got, the, we got the final four here. Oh, God. So skip to number one. So there is a clear well, no, winner of first place. Yeah. Yeah, we can know who with, tied, right? We can know who four is because it's not part of it. I know. I do do something fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. He's going to do something about it. I trust so you. So the number one winner yeah. with 13 votes, the most of anything here, Bloodborne. Yes! yes! Wow. Woo! Wow. Fourth time's the charm, baby! Wow. Fourth time's the charm! Yeah. Not on the Nintendo console! Woo! Wow. 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 wow! We did it! We did it! Okay, Thanks, Brad. Oh, baby. Bro, oh, this wow. time. We did it. All right. It's kind of embarrassing that I wasn't in yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, God. So, I'm time. I'm so glad leaves. it wasn't one of the ties. Three games loser. vying for the last spot. Oh. And we, we did. we did have a tie. So, coming in fourth place with eight votes. So, your choices, the, the last remaining three were God of War Portal and Link's Awakening. Oh. So, coming in fourth, not making the cut, with eight votes, Link's Awakening. Oh, no. No. Oh. oh! Sorry, dude. Cut me deep. Oh. Hey, right. That's nice. close, I gave it a so, uh, Congrats yeah. to Portal and uh, God yeah, of War, though. Leaves. Portal and wow. God of War tied with 11 votes. 11 yes. each? Yes. Wow. Yeah. wow. And then our, our patrons are going to choose which one gets a Hall of Greats, wow. the other one just doesn't. Wow. Whoa. Wow. That's going to wow. be fun. The That's ball's really in your fun. court now. <laughs> I honestly, I voted for both of those, so I don't know. Yeah. Man, I couldn't vote for Portal. Wow. But I voted for Bloodborne, baby. Thanks, Jones. Thanks I voted for, for Portal. Oh. <laughs> Man, Obviously. Okay. I voted yeah. for both. Yeah, Yay! me too. Yeah, so uh, if you're Thanks, a everybody. Yeah, yeah, let's look at the debates. Post. I'll make that tomorrow morning. I'll make that. Oh, yeah, uh, let's Wednesday morning. Chat back. back. Yeah, we'll bring a chat back. Oh yeah, no more spoilers. Chat, chat, chat back. back. Spoilers. Yeah. Chat just in a rage. Yeah. Right now. Wow. <laughs> chat, how you doing? How you chat, holding you up? Know, just holding my hands here. What's crying? Woo! Chat is wild. I just yeah, they're oh, obviously range. they're making a case for which game. They yeah, they're making a case. Yeah. 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 Are they are yeah, they making a case or are they just saying the they're making? <laughs> 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 they're just screaming portal. 
Oh man. Oh, I can't baby. wait to see that poll. I think it's actually going to be pretty uh, close. I, I am yeah. Only Black Mage, 10 gifted subs. Thank Dude, you. Thank you, Only Black, Black Mage. Mage and again, we probably missed a lot of subs tonight. Oh, thank course, you, everyone, for subbing. Oh man. It's so fast. Close. Chat's going so fast. Oh wow. god, I feel so, so good. Good, good yeah. showdown. Good showdown. You bring Bloodborne next time just for kicks. Yeah. <laughs> Look, hear me out. I know it's already in there. Okay, Bloodborne. We'll be great. Specifically Lost Hunters, let's talk about. Old yeah, Hunters. Uh, old Hunters yeah. Uh, if you didn't, weren't here at the beginning of the stream, this was our last stream, group stream from this garage. We're moving out. Like you're it's like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, because um, it'll be out, right? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, there, you, won't be, you won't see any more streams from this garage, but uh, what... Uh, group streams. Group yeah, streams, not group yeah. Streams, yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, the, the PC's gone tomorrow, so there's not, if I wanted to stream... There's nothing I could do from this garage. Work, work. This is it, folks. Uh, what uh, what other personal streams do we have coming up? I know we got some biggies. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., continuing my full playthrough of Tales of Vesperia. Yes. It's been very fun. First run through. Three. Yeah. Whoa. Please join us. Please join me. Doing, Doing the right thing, Ben. Yeah. Brad, you got something coming up. What, a stream? Oh, yeah. What? I do? What? You told me about it before we... What? Oh, me and Damiani, we're playing a uh, oh yeah, Final Fantasy XIV, the Blue, Blue Mage content. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, four, four. Right after Ben stream. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's gonna be yeah. hype. <laughs> gonna be awesome. Awesome. Change to three fifty. Looking for spells. It'll be awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, I am. I'm gonna work to get a some kind of video done by Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time for Cup of Jones. If I do not, I will post something. Uh, the Cup of Jones uh, moved last week, and and I got some criticisms, rightly so, that I did not update people via Patreon uh, about that happening. But um, uh, so if I don't get that video done, I will post something on Thursday at 10 saying I didn't get it done expected on this date or sometime this weekend. But uh, before. The, the next week's Cup of Jones, you will get a, a video version of Cup, uh, probably focused just on this room and the the process of moving, the process of wrapping it all up. My, mild, mild tease. A mild tease. You'll get a little more Jones uh, on Saturday as well. Woo! Woo! Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then Sunday at 1 p.m., Kyle and I will be going through a full playthrough of Resident Evil 2 Remake. Dude, I will clap for that. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. And then you're gonna show off the Resident Evil 3 remake after that, right? Like yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Nemesis. Uh, who, what main character are we doing? Expansion. Uh, you know, we'll probably, I, I gotta talk to Kyle about uh, options, difficulty, characters. We gotta yeah. work it all out. Yeah, are yeah. you gonna be helming the game the whole time yeah. or are you gonna switch off? We never probably. switch Kyle off. That's he not doesn't wanna play. Yeah. Yeah, I might have, uh, sure, I actually only. might have Kyle do a puzzle or two, though. Okay. I'll take your puzzles. Okay. Yeah. 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 I already know the solution, so it would yeah. be really fun to hand that part yeah. off. As, you try as a puzzle to... platformer, yeah. I think that Kyle would be good for that game. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and also, Friday night, 9 p.m., getting a little crazy, Whoa. I'm doing a PS4 grab bag. Ooh. Whoa. What are you grabbing? Three games. Bags. Uh, just that I got off, off sale off the PlayStation Store. I thought they'd be fun to stream. We'll is, see if they're good or not. Is one of them Last of Us? No, dude. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> no, dude. Uh, so, nah, yeah, that'll be dude. fun or awful. We'll see. That's good. Cool. It's the fun it. of it. Um, also, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, Huber got to spend a little time with Resident Evil 2 devs. Oh, yes. shit. And uh, so, When, when yeah. does that go live? Uh, 10 a.m. Friday? I uh, know tomorrow. Ah, nice. Yeah. Nice. So keep a lookout for that. Uh, some some very cool some video. questions from Huber and then some uh, yeah, some cool. gameplay commentary. Yeah, very cool video. It was cool. Yeah. Nice. P I, I filmed it with him. It was nice. Too. It's it's too bad I couldn't have like played and reviewed it and then done it because I have like uh, so many questions now. But it was right. still yeah. such an awesome thing to do. So fun. Um, a lot of people in chat are asking, will you see the, stu the new studio before Tuesday the 29th? No, you will not. Nope. Uh, that'll be a reveal day. And there will be lots of different reveals. So Tuesday night will be our group stream. We're still going to be focused on streaming that night. You know, we will introduce you to the studio. There will be video components that will be an introduction to the space. Yeah. Uh, but we are going to be playing 
uh, some some bonus modes. Undetermined, loads. yeah. Oh, undetermined. Oh, uh, those we RT might bonus shake it up. Maybe? We might shake it up. Okay. Yeah, so that, that, that stream might get shaken up. And uh, I also want to, you know, go to patreon.com slash easy allies, Cup of Jones, every week. I've, I've been updating people on fun stuff for the studio, showing some behind the scenes video and, and pictures. Uh, there's there's going to be a lot of new video moving into the studio space, not a ton of video moving out of this garage. <laughs> we definitely have put the emphasis on everything that we are moving and setting up in this new space. So apologies tonight if you're tuning in for our, our last group stream here that there wasn't some big, you know, like Enya playing in the background and slow-mo <laughs> of like montage of all of the stuff we've done in the space. Um, uh, we, we might get to that eventually because that stuff's not going anywhere. You can still see archives on Twitch and, and, and YouTube. I will still be doing Cup of Jones here. I will still be living in this house, you know, so uh, it just, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm announcing here tonight no, no guess um, that uh, I need to get something because I've slept on this couch before. Uh, I gotta find something. I can't sleep on the floor. I gotta, maybe I gotta get something in here. Kyle looks nervously at the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've snoozed many it's times. A, Jones, this is a nasty couch. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going in the studio. It's gonna find its own treasured place. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, there's just a ton of stuff going on. And, and so this was a very, I mean, nothing typical about Hall of Greats, but, uh, this was, uh, um, a, 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 a typical, you know, group stream night activity. Uh, but, uh. Uh, we just we had really good numbers tonight. I don't know if anybody checked, but we you know with a lot of people tuning in tonight, a lot of people watching us. Apologies if there weren't any big crazy announcements or or big crazy news going into the studio. Other than this is it, we're we're, we're moving in and, and wrapping up. Any any shows or anything else? Easy update about? Uh, oh. on Saturday. Yeah, we'll be good. Not the studio episode that'll come later. Fiasco nuts. Fiasco nuts coming up on Friday. It will not have music because. Uh, literally, no time. <laughs> there no time. is no time. No time. I mean, we yeah. will be okay. setting up. I was planning to be on two straight days, and then I cut Resident Evil all night, so I was sleeping while that yeah. episode so was being recorded. <laughs> it it'll come up tonight uh, for patrons uh, in the five dollar and up tier, so you'll get it earlier than usual. But it won't have music. Sorry, things are too crazy right now. Yeah. And we do have a review in progress. Do we yeah, Ace Combat Sevens in progress. Yeah. yeah. As well as uh, Q and A's coming up on Saturday too for oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. And it's the end of the month, so fifty and up will get their gifts soon from us. Gifts? gifts? You mean, the, have you been sending gifts? Fan mail. The fan mail. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You look so mad. Have you been sending gifts? Have you not been sending gifts? No. I give. I make an email thing and I email them like a song or a game or something. That's not a gift. What is that? Ooh. What is that? If it's not a gift, gift, like an Amazon gift card. Ooh. No, I'm not spending money on these. Things. I'm not spending time on them. Oh, man, so, say no, say no, say no, say no, say no. So, so it'll look weird because we. This is our last night, but you will still see episodes of things from the garage that have been recorded. Um, but. All of that stuff has been recorded before tonight. We are literally, the Easy Allies podcast following this will be the last thing that we have shot in the garage. Um, and uh, um, I just want to say personally, thank you. To, to, I want to thank two groups of people. One, I want to thank the Allies for hanging out with me at my house. For, 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 for putting up with this, I know uh, I know in a lot, you know, it's like, oh, we welcome them into my house and all of that. I didn't have a commute. That was great. But, like, the idea of being comfortable, like, at my house on my property and and really making this so so unique and special like I, I think there's a lot of fun you know directions we want to take easy allies over the years but uh this was such a weird thing and i will never forget it um just what you know what we were able to achieve in this space what we did with the small space and uh it'll be uh it was sometimes uncomfortably intimate that i think we'll, we'll miss that intimacy a little bit um but at the same time uh, obviously there's a lot of fun stuff we can do moving forward but i just I, i'll never forget uh, being really happy and, you know, kind of like honored almost when I was like, Hey, where are, uh, you know, where are we going to do this? And we just happened to have the meeting in this space. Uh, and I don't know if I think it was Ewing or blood or somebody just kind of looked around the room and they were like, this works. I was like, Oh wow. I didn't even think. And it and was probably the, me volunteering which us, someone else's right, house. Yep. For this <laughs> adventure. Yeah, probably... Which brings me to the second group I want to thank, which is all of you, because I was so nervous um, I mean, obviously Patreon, we get a lot of support. Obviously YouTube, we have a lot of subscribers. Just cross 200K if you haven't heard. So thank you so much, everybody. Subscribe yeah. to us on YouTube. Go us, go us. But 
when we do live stuff in here, you know, when, when their Twitch audience shows up and, you know, I'm, I'm nervous when we reveal new things like the first time we did Hall of Greats and, and the Kyle Bossman's trial and, and just stuff that we've done live that, uh, you know, we, we tried to, you know, shake things up and do different things that other people aren't doing on Twitch. Uh, the, the first thing when people saw from here, I was like, I can't, no one's going to like this. We're going to be like, oh, this is your garage. And I'm just not feeling this vibe. I think the, the style has improved over the years. We have made good adjustments. Uh, going into the corner was a big step. That was great. <laughs> but, um, just, just that you were welcoming in, you know, understanding that, you know, we're, we, we are doing the best that we can. It was just a non goof, a bunch of nine goofballs just, you know, talking about games and, and doing fun things live. But that you embraced this space and and uh, that you you let us continue doing what we love. Not only the shows that we produce, not only the, the, the discourse that we have in our podcasts and live streams and all of that, but specifically this room that, you know, you, you tuned in and we're like, yeah, let's hang out here. That, that'll that'll work. That'll be fine. Um, I want to uh, I want to I want to keep the studio. I want to keep this garage in your life if it brings you happiness. Uh, and the fact that it does means a lot to me because uh, obviously this, this space holds a lot of meaning for me because um, it's my house. Uh, so thank you to the allies and thank you to all of you. Wait, hold on, and Jones. Yeah. We have to thank you. We wouldn't yeah. be able to do and this Jones. without you, man. Yes. Thank you, Jones. 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 Thank you, Jones. Jones. Thank you, Jones. Yeah. You put up with us way better than I would have. Yeah, Bones on the streets. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. One time the toilet was like pretty full <laughs> and I still flushed it and I felt so like I ruined Jones's rugs and I felt so bad about that. Oh, when they were <laughs> Yeah. I <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's a good time. <laughs> Cheers to all the good times. Yeah. Yeah. The I best of times. <laughs> but yeah, we're not going away. We're just moving to a new place. Yeah. Uh, if, if there are people joining us now that are confused or scared. No, we're still doing it. I think that would be a great compliment. Bigger and better. If you're like, eh, it's just same old, same old. You know, like, I'll, that's fine. You know, if you see the new studio and you're like, eh, I think it's about even. You know, I miss the old space, but I think this will work. Like, I would be devastated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After all the work we've been putting into that place. Uh... uh we will yeah. see. And hopefully, you know, everything goes okay, but, you know, you, you never... When we first un unboxed that switcher, it didn't work, so, like, oh there, there is some equipment right. that is in, uh, on the way. If we, we Our two couches oh. are sitting in boxes in the studio. If we open up one and it doesn't have legs, like, uh-oh. No. Like, if, so anything's, if anything's broken, we, like, don't have time right. to fix it. <laughs> so, yeah, we will, we will keep you up to date. Obviously, there's lots of different places you can go. Uh, we will be posting, you know, video updates, but, of no course, following us on account. Facebook and Twitter is advised. Uh, and, of course, going to patreon.com slash easyallies. Even if you are not a patron, even if you do not give us money there, we still will, you know, be posting updates and stuff. And patrons will out. vote on the Hall of Greats yeah. tonight, later tonight. And uh, you sign in if you want to, want to watch Cup of Jones this week, because there'll be, yeah, some more fun stuff. Behind the scenes stuff, specifically about, about this room. But, uh... Mm. <laughs> Funny. I feel like I'm, I'm sentimental, but also let's like, let's do it. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. the prevailing I'm attitude I think yeah. is it's time. Let's wrap it up. Anything else? Um, we do it. I I mean I can think of one thing. Okay. Trash the place. Trash it. Yeah! 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 Yeah!